Aleluia. May the Lord bless us today. And make his face shine on us. Matthew 9, 35. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people but when he saw the multitude he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd then he said to his disciples the harvest truly is plentiful but the laborers are few therefore pray the lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest the lord of the harvest today may you encounter the lord of the harvest amen. i don't like that amen. amen the lord of the harvest so um the beginning of my exposition i will try to link us from purpose to assignment our topic today is love is the greatest love the greatest so we must first of all understand that we are in a perilous time the last day of the age and the prophet Isaiah spoke in Isaiah 53 from verse 6 that we all as sheep have gone our way. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. All we as sheep we are scattered. So, to talk about something being scattered, meaning there was a time it was united before it became scattered. Are you hearing me? Yes. Whenever you hear scatter, think about unity. Before we were scattered, we were all united in one body before. We were all united in one spirit before. So one of the major purpose of Jesus coming is to gather what was scattered. So in Matthew eleven twenty, 28, he says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Come. Same people that scattered, he's, he's calling all of them to come back. Are you hearing me? That was his major assignment, to gather all the lost sheep. Because I've always told you before that we are all one in God before. We are all wired to God. We are all that Father called God that is fragmented into different body. So when we came into the earth, we scattered. We went our way. So the first assignment of the Christ is to gather everyone that scattered. In Ephesians 4 from verse 1, it explained properly. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of your calling, which you were called. Let's see that calling. He said, what is that calling? He said, the calling is what? Two. He said, with all lowliness and gentleness and long suffering, bear with one another in love. Endure to keep the unity of the spirit. Are you seeing that? Meaning we were one spirit before with God. You are God that came to dwell in human body. The unity. Don't forget the unity. That's what he said. Put that scripture there. 
the unity of the spirits. You are cutting my hand. What are you taking? You are cutting the hand. God says you bring your camera properly. Are you hearing me? Is he endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace? There is one body, one spirit. Just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. You know, most of the time I see people, they say, they hate God. Or they deny God. It's yourself you are denying. It's yourself you are hating. That God is a you hate. It's you. Are you hearing me? Yes. Body unbeliever, body thief, body mad, everybody. It is all God living in human body. In Psalm 104, from verse 20 or so from verse 20 go to 30 let me see he said you send forth their spirit you send forth your spirit not even their own God is saying see that thing there you are God's spirit is sent into your mother's womb your mother was not the one that formed you not, not your father are you, are you hearing that? Yes, sir. Uh, please read that. Let me hear you read it. Again. Who was created? You. <laughs> he sent forth his spirit. He dispersed himself. And that is how you came. But remember their first scripture. We all as sheep have gone astray. We forgot where we came from. So the assignment is, the, 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 the plan of God is to rewire us again to that one body, one spirit. Are you hearing me? And on, because until we become one, before we pursue one purpose, God's purpose, until we come that one, we we'll keep on laboring. Jesus said, come back, you that have been laboring. Come, let me give you rest. And when he was trying to explain this love, he used the one that had, the, the, the shepherd that have hundred sheep and one got lost. He said he left the 99 to look for the one. That's how serious it is. The assignment of Jesus is to gather the lost. We that were lost. Listen, the lost are not sinners. The lost are those that don't know where they came from. You can be a Christian, a believer, you don't know where you came from. You don't know why you came. You don't know why you are here. So in Ecclesiastes 12 from verse 7, he said, when we die, he said, the dust return back. The dust will return back to the earth where it was. And the spirit will return to God who gave it. Remember in Psalm, he said, he sent forth his spirit. Then we came. Now he's saying, when it's time for us to return, put that scripture there, please. When it's time for us to return, he said, well, read that again. Let's read it again. See, Bible answer, I don't know, this, <laughs> this is how Bible is. He answer everything. It just, one scripture connects to another. You were sent into this world. You did not come. In John 1 from verse 6, John said, there was, the Bible said there was a man sent by God. That is you. <laughs> a man sent from God. All man, all men, all human are sent from God. Amen. 
But immediately we enter into this world, God is trying to gather us back again. Into one purpose, into one body, into one spirit, into one vision. Anywhere you are lost, be found in the name of Jesus. Amen. When Jesus was talking about this loss, he spoke about the lost sheep and how the shepherd left 99 to look for the one. Meaning God can leave angels, 24 elders, heaven, everything he has and come to this earth to look for that one fragment of himself, which is humanity, that lost. That's you know, the, good, uh, the, 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 the parable of the good shepherd. And he spoke about it again in the parable of the, two, the prodigal son that went astray from his father. He said, Father, give me all that belongs to me. Let me go and do my own purpose, live my own life, Spend the way I want. The truth is, I said, the lost are not unbelievers. You can be a believer and you are lost. Because there are many prodigal believers. Until we find our purpose in God. And begin to work our purpose through God. And God cannot work through us. Then we have returned from prodigal. From the prodigal life. But as far as you are still chasing your own purpose and your own plan and your own will, you are still a prodigal Christian. Are you hearing me? Yes, <laughs> that spirit that sent forth the spirit had a plan. Why he sent forth the spirit? He had a purpose. He has an intent. He had a vision why he sent forth different spirits into the earth. So if the spirit that is sent into the earth begin to do something else, that spirit has lost his assignment. It, it has disconnected from the source. That's the meaning of the prodigal son. You disconnect it from your source. That's why we experience lack, we experience hunger, we experience pain, we experience loneliness because we disconnect from the source. When that prodigal son went out from the father, that was when he squandered everything he had. He became poor and he started eating with pigs until he said, I will return. You return to God by finding his divine purpose for your life. Amen. Are you hearing me? Because we are not sent to run a religion, we are sent to run a relationship. God is a bad relationship. God is not about religion. It's about what? Not what? It's about God is about relationship. God wants relationship. God craves for relationship. God tastes for relationship. God is passionate about relationship. God exists by relationship. Not service. God does not want service from you first. God wants relationship from you first. Would you believe that? Yes. Believe me, God does not want anything from you than relationship. The first, the core purpose God wants from you and I is relationship. That's why the Bible said in Proverbs 23 from verse 26, it says, my son, give me your heart. Not give me your money. <laughs> not give me worship. Give me your heart. It takes heart to be in a relationship. It takes what? It takes what? Yes. It takes what? Yes. My son, give me what? Yes. Can I say that scripture there? What did he say? Again? Again? Do you know a prostitute? Do you know who is a prostitute? Do you know who is a prostitute? Yes, Why are you quiet now? <laughs> Look as if are we, are, we, are we okay here? Yeah? What's going on here? Some men are doing like this. <laughs> in, case, in case you are doing like this for guilty conscience, God will gather you back today. If you read your Bible very well, whenever the prophets are writing about 
the children of God disconnecting from God. He said, you have gone to our lottery. That's what God called it. Anytime we disconnect from him, he call it our lottery. And do you understand what our lottery means? When a man come marries a woman, when they meet as husband and wife, it is prepared by love. Before a woman give or a man come together, what join them together is their hearts and their love in marriage. But when it's a prostitute, a prostitute can give you the body without the heart. Are you hearing me? Yes. That's why most prostitutes, they kill you when you finish. Some of them can have disease, they won't tell you. Because the assignment is they don't like you, they just want to offer you what you want. <laughs> many people have been, many people have gone to prostitute and prostitutes stole all everything they went with. Or gave them a, over a sleeping tablet, they slept off and took everything they have. And sometimes, if you finish with them, some of them can hold you and say, The money you gave to me is not enough. They are not ashamed to embarrass you. Because their intent was to give you body, not heart. It's different from a man meeting his wife. There are some things your wife can't do to you. Because she gave you a heart first before her body. But a prostitute gives you body, not heart. Are you getting that? Yes, sir. So religion is giving God your body when you have not given him your heart. Worshipping God in body. Worshipping God in voice. Worshipping God with activities. Even giving. If you give to God without your heart, it is prostitution. If you are worshipping or you are dancing to God, serving God, and you have not given him your heart, it is a lottery. So God is not interested in a lottery. My son, give me your heart. Give me your heart. He said, then your eyes will observe my ways. It's a call. It's a call from God. Are you hearing me? Is a call from God. Is a call. Say, I'm hearing a call from God. God is saying, David, if you call my name, I'll come after you there. But <laughs> call your own name. <laughs> call your own name. Say, God is calling my name. David, give me your heart. Not your worship. Not your money. Not your time. Give me your heart. And when God was trying to explain prostitution that the Israelites were doing, he used the prophet Osi to go and marry a prostitute. He married the prostitute, the prostitute gave birth to a child, she ran back again to do her prostitution. God said, go again after her. He went again after the same thing. When it is prostitution, there's no consistency. You, are you hearing me? Yes. You are just there for benefit. And you always chase other lovers. Do you see that? When it is prostitution, you have option. If, the, if God does not give this to me today, I will go to Sangoma tomorrow. That is prostitution. Anything that divides your attention from God, anything that you can claim as an option to God, is prostitution. Are you hearing me? Yes, is what? So don't think it's the allot that is standing on the way that is prostitute. You can be a, a church prostitute, a, 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 a Christian prostitute, a temple prostitute. every service that the centripetal force of that service is not the arts, is prostitution. You see why God is not accepting a lot of worship from us? Our praises, our giving, our service, many things we are doing are just ritual activities. They are not prepared 
by the love of our heart. So he said, my children. David. What did he say? Call your name. If you know the devil will not use your name against you, call that name. Give me your heart. I'm not hearing you. Say, David. Give me your heart. If you really want to get blessing from someone, let that person love you from the heart. I'm telling you. If you want to be favored in life, let people love you from heart. Not mouth. And do you know, if, if you can't around your life, you only find few among the millions or thousands of people you know that sincerely love you with their heart. Very few. Because to love with the heart is a lab it's labor. It's labor. It's, it, are you hearing me? Yes, sir. It's not cheap. It's labor. To take, a, to take a laborious activities for someone to love you. So you can be here now. You know 1,000 people. Only two people love you with their heart. You are not hearing me. You think, you think people love you? you it's, in fact, some people here, there's no, nobody love you. It will shock you one day to know that people just like you. They like your look. They like your gift. They like what you represent. Nobody loves you. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Let it not surprise you. I'm telling you now that you will be aware. You discover that many friendships you are in is a lottery friendship. Many marriages are a lottery marriage. Many relationships are a lottery relationship. The people, the individual, they have not submitted their heart. They are only there for benefit's sake. I am with you as far as you are helping me. I'm with you as far as you bought air for me. I'm with you because I, I really needed marriage and you came. So if we can, I'm, I'm, I'm just stressing you now. If it is difficult to love like this, tell me how difficult it will be to love a spirit that you can't see God. I bet you, I believe me, many relationships and many marriages are frustrated today because it is a lottery. It is not really relationship. It is not from the heart. And that time, you, you know, many people get, you know, some people get to a certain age, they become so lonely that anybody that mistakenly comes that time, they hold that person strong. They say, you are my husband. Or you are my wife. You can't run away from me. Some of them, because the person came at the point they were in need and the person provided for them. Say, I am not leaving you. I remember that time I was suffering. You came and helped me. A lottery. They know their heart is not invested in it. It was something they benefited from. The relationship, are you hearing me? Yes, you can deceive people and be in a relationship. Thank you, God. Those are clear. <laughs> you can deceive people for thousands of years, even in marriages, and be with them for benefits. The relationship is there for benefit, but you can't do that with God. Why many people are rolling away from your faith, Christianity? It's not because they don't like it. It's because we don't really understand what Christianity is. That Christianity is love-based. Not activities, not service, not fasting, not prayer, not giving, not coming to church. It is deeper than that. Christianity is a relationship. A relationship is love. And love will require the whole of your heart. My son, give me your heart. You know, people have forcefully told you that um, the best way to know that uh, somebody loves you is to give you. You know, some people say that the first attribute of love, how will you know that there's true love if I give you? Even the devil can give, my dear. What are you saying? 
you are misquoting the Bible. Giving is not the first sign of love. Everybody can give. People can even give you out of hatred. Out of, because the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. So there are people that give. Let, let's, let's just give for high service. So giving is not the first criteria of true love. The first criteria of true love is patience. Is what? Patience. You've never heard it before. The devil can give everything, but he can't give patience. He does not have patience. Humans can give you anything. Any human being that gives you patience, love that, that person truly loves you. Do you hear me? That's the first sign that you are loved by someone. Patience. What? Patience. That's the first criteria. In other words, patience is called long-suffering. So Paul was explaining love in 1 Corinthians 13 from verse 4. And he said, charity suffers long. In other translation, it suffers long means patience. Let me see amplified version. You see? Love endures long and is patient. You see that? Love does what? Love does what? Now, let me tell you something. So, just listen. As you are sitting there now, there are many angels that are more than you. If you don't talk, they will, they will hit you on your shoulder. I, I, if I just do man like this for them, the way they knock Peter from sleep in the prison, they will smite your shoulder. Don't look back. Oh, it's not your neighbor at your back. <laughs> Do you know why many relationships are still lasting today? Is what I call endurance and patience. That's, the, that's why. Not that there's no mistake or there are no errors or the boats have not scattered as sheep. Many times they have betrayed one another. But patience is the greatest gift anybody can give you. You know your little children that you are living with? The toddlers that are living here. Some of them poop on the ground. Some of them will go to your toilet. They take the toilet through, wrap it everywhere, and they are happy. You, listen, if you have a toddler in your house, if they are quiet, everywhere is quiet, that's, go and look for them. As long as it's happening. You are not, you are, you are not hearing me. <laughs> they, are, they are in a serious business. And anytime they are, they are doing that, kind of, they will be quiet. Doing It's when you come, then you will see signs and wonders. <laughs> Sometimes they have, they have dipped your laptop in the water and they are soaking it and typing it inside again. One young toddler took stone one time and stoned their big television that, was, that the father just bought new. It has not lasted for one week. He just took something and stoned the person. He's like, Bo! When, when he got broken, so he was waiting for his father at the door. When his father just came, he said, I broke the TV. <laughs> so, do what you want to do. So, he expects the father to say, okay, I will come bring one down from where it is. In their mind, they, they think is just when you break that one, I will go and carry on that one and put it there. In all that, you are patient with them. Yes. That's love. Are you hearing me? Love is what? Patience. Very good. Now you are coming up. So to test love, test the amount of patience the person can give you. Tell anybody, test tube of love. In any relationship, friendship is the longevity of patience Yes. That's what John 3.16 says. For God so loved the world before he gave. It took a lot of patience. God was watching the world misbehaving and did not destroy the world. That's patience. That's what? Yes. People 
don't, people don't understand that scripture. They say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only... So they're not taught love. The sign, first sign of love is giving. No. There were some things you were not seeing before he gave. And that thing is called patience. Long-suffering. So you saw them misbehaving. Everybody was... You, you, believe me, you can cause God to deny. He won't touch you. Yes. You can deny him flat right now. You know many times how many things you said against him. But he will be patient. The day you now return back and say, Lord, I'm sorry, he will say you are welcome. Before God forgive, God was patient. You know, forgive. That's giving before you even ask. Forgive. Before somebody forgive, the person has to be patient. So patience comes before giving. There are many broken homes today, many broken relationships. Not that the, the, the husband is not ready to give the wife, or the wife is not ready to give the husband. You can say, I will buy you a house, I will buy you a car. But impatience can't accept any gift. I, I, I don't want any more. I don't want the gift anymore. Take your gift. Impatience. So you, you, you say, You have provoked me too much, you have offended me too much. You've hurt me too much. That's impatience. Because Jesus, Peter came to us and said, how many times should our neighbor offend us before we not forgive them again? Jesus said, 70 times 77 times, meaning uncountable. And it will take patience to do that. Do you hear me? Yes, Somebody offend you now, apologize, offend you again, apologize. Offend. It takes patience to keep on forgiving. Are you hearing me? All right. You see, okay. If you want to do that, what I'm saying, let's turn to uh, uh, First Corinthians 13 from verse one. You see all what Paul said about love. First Corinthians 13 from verse one. Do I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love? I am is I become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. To speak in tongues of angels also like say, you know, you know when you come before God and say, Lord, you are wonderful, you are beautiful, you are wonderful. Yeah. Everything you like call God, but if it is not from the place of love, it's a sounding brass. <laughs> what do the angels do? They worship God. That's what the angels do. That's their major assignment. They worship God and they are ministers. So if I'm worshiping, I'm praising, I'm singing, and it's not from the place of love, I'm making noise. That's what he said there. Verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have faith so that I could remove mountains, but I have no love, I am nothing. Mm -hmm. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, is he giving there? You see giving there? Yes, you see giving? Yes, Is that not giving? He said, I bestow all my goods, meaning you will all your property to charity. Or you give your wife everything, or your husband everything. Yet you can give, and yet it's not from the place of love. That's what he's showing you there. He said, and do I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and do I give my body to be born, but I have not love. It profit me nothing. You see that? So I can give everything. I can give billions, millions. Yet, I'm not giving from the place of love. It's called giving from the place of allotry. Personal benefits. Are you hearing me? Yes, so if you're in a relationship that are giving you, it does not mean they love you. So the first thing to look or to trace when relationship comes is not this person give me time this person buy me wristwatch he bought me a G wagon he built me a house you see let me tell you something there are some men here they know what I'm saying they have caught a girl in secondary school help her to pay to university when she graduates she now say you are not my type 
she would say, thank you for everything you did for me. I needed you then. And those days when she was in high school, she was professing love to that person. That's why the man continued. You don't know. Yes, you can't, you can't be helping somebody if the person didn't profess love to you. At the beginning when you came to their need, where you, were, where you were covering the emptiness, their lack, they will say, oh, I love you. If you are the God sent, you are the one God sent. If it is not you, nobody else again. But when I open, they graduate, then they will know that you didn't finish school. That, <laughs> so, so that means... <laughs> So, you, you sponsor her to become literate so that she can discover you are an illiterate. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> yes, these things have happened many... Um, uh, some men that are sitting close to you, they can testify if they want to be sincere. <laughs> <laughs> Many people have that kind of testimony here. Because human beings are self centered. That's the fallen nature of man. The first gift man had when he fell is to, is to be what? Self centered, selfish. Yes. And it takes love to be selfless. It takes love to even see somebody that you know is speaking English up and down, is not correct. And you know where you are going as a person, say, okay, I'm going to be a doctor as a lady. Let's say, then a man, a tattered looking man, but he has money in his pocket. He has so much money. Come to you and say, baby girl, it's me, I see you, I love you so much. Me, I pay your school fees even to. He, he, he take love to tell that man that, listen, my future, I didn't see you there. I might need you now. <laughs> you don't, yeah, are you hearing me? He take love to tell the person the truth. Why am I turning to, okay, to women? Okay, let me talk to men also. You know, there are some men that we marry because they don't have, they go and carry a lady. The lady grow with them. When they become rich, they do not know that you are too old for me. You are too fat. Look at you. You, you, are, you are not like all these girls outside. Just, 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 just look at that baby girl. They are compare you to who they saw on TV. But that is what goes on in the art of man. Man is deceitful. The art of man is desperately wicked and is deceitful. Who can know it? So man, the dimensions of man unveil the more they advance in life. If they give you $100,000, a certain version of you will come out that you didn't know was inside you. If you qualify to a million, another version will unfold. If you qualify to be another version will unfold. You don't know yourself. Who? You are not hearing me. If you... <laughs> Okay, so people don't like what I'm teaching today. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. The Bible says a poor man speak with entreaties. Meaning, they, 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 before a poor man will speak, he will arrange his word properly. He don't want to, make, he don't want to offend you. He has to be diplomatic. He said, but a rich man speak the way he wants. So, meaning there's a way finance, when you don't have, you are gentle and you are obedient, you are quiet, you are humble. Immediately you have. Do you know me? <laughs> we don't know you before, it's now we are knowing you. You are right. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, the Bible says we should labor to enter God's rest. Labor to Jesus uh, in Hebrew 4 from verse. 11. He said, let us labor to enter his rest. But that translation says, be diligent to enter his rest. Labor to enter his rest. Be diligent to enter his rest. So I ask myself, how do we labor to enter his rest? God's blessings are 
Eden in two words. God wants us to labor in two things. Number one is love. Number two is faith. If we labor in love and faith, many things we are running after will come to us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Labor in what? First Thessalonians 1 3. There is a labor to love. So love is not a joke. You see that? He said, remembering without ceasing your work of faith. Labor of love. Love is a labor. You are not hearing me. Love is a what? Labor. Huh? Labor. Love is what? Labor. That's why it's not easy. It's not easy to love. Don't just feel excited and say, I love you. You feel emotional and just be happy and say, since I, start, since I met you, I don't understand myself again. I just love you. I connect to you. The labor of love is commitment. Before you say I love you, are you ready to commit? Are you hearing me? <laughs> and to be committed, it will take patience to be committed to someone. Oh, you didn't, you, you never knew that love is a labor, isn't it? Yeah? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> love is a big labor. God is a labor. Remembering without season your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God our Father. Hebrews 6 10. Hebrews 6 10. He said, For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. It takes labor to work and to love. The hardest work is the work of love. Let me show you those labor. He listed the labor in 1 Corinthians 13 from verse 4. Let's see all those labor. It is, these things are laborious. He said, love suffers long. That is a labor. To be, love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not pushed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek his own selflessness. Is not provoke. Think no evil. Imagine how many people you think evil of every day. Give me, a, give me the amplified. Let's re, let's re, let's read the labor of love again. Let's start from verse four. Amplified. Are we ready? Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. Love endures long and is patient and kind. Love, ne love never is envious nor boys over jealousy. Is not boastful or vainglorious. Does not display itself hugely. It is not consistent, meaning arrogant and inflicted with pride. It is not rude or mannerly and does not act unbecomely. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on his own rights or his own way. For it is not self-seeking, it is not selfish. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of evil. Are you, oh, are you hearing me? Many of us have the account balance of all the people that have offended us. I can't balance. You know, I can't balance. <laughs> you can mostly women. They can go back to dates and give you the exact date in June 12, 20, 2009, in the evening. You said my mother was. <laughs> they have it in their back account. Or first account. Are you seeing that? They have it in their bitterness account. So any day you do anything, they will, they will start replaying it for you again. Exactly the date, the time, the seconds you did it, how you, the clothes you were wearing that day, oh my God, you'll be shocked. And she'll say, even that day, I remember that I cooked pap for you, you didn't eat it. I even have to give it to the dog. Because the children traveled that day. It was later after three days you were now asking me about the food. Ah, 
You thought you forgot. He's there. You say, love does not have account of evil. Don't do it. It's a labor. It's not a labor. Eh? Huh? So don't think love is easy. Don't go and don't see somebody that says, I love you. You know what I say? Love is laborious. Tell me about love is laborious. Tell me about love is hard work. You know how many times people have offended you? I'm, 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 how patient are you with them? Some of them you have block, delete, and buried in your mind. He said he pays no attention to a suffered wrong. He does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness. But rejoice with right and truth, and truth prevail. When right and truth prevail, love bears up under anything. It bears. It bears anything and everything that comes. You see that? Is ever ready to believe the best of every person. So you can see the worst of a person, and you are believing that person is good. It will change. You are not. You are not hearing me. Love is hard work. Oh. It's a labor. It's a, God will not forget your labor of love. Any marriage that is still thriving today is labor of love. Oh. It's a labor full of many injuries and pain. Love bear everything. Okay. Its hope are fadeless under all circumstances. And it endures everything without weakening. Hmm. Love never fails. Never fades out of ne never fades out or become obsolete or comes to an end. Hmm. As for prophecy, the gift of interpreting divine will and purpose, it will fulfill, it will be fulfilled and pass away. As for tongue, they will be destroyed and cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. It will lose its value and it will be subsided by truth. For our knowledge is fragmentally incomplete and imperfect. And our prophecy, our teaching is fragmentary, incomplete and imperfect. But when the complete and perfect total comes, the incomplete and the imperfect will vanish away and become antiquated, void and subsided. So let us labor. Labor. Now, where we are taking this labor of love to, God does not want us to give him anything. The first thing God wants from us is love. Because God knows the kind of pain and the suffering you will experience on earth. Because the Christ in you will always weep. Jesus wept. Yes, you go through pain. Christ in you. That Christ in me. The hope of glory. Christ also carry cross. Jesus said, if you be my disciple, you will carry your cross. It will take love to carry that cross. It will take love to weep and still continue following God. Because we are in the perilous time. It will take love to suffer and still continue the race. Many times your soul will be troubled with the pains and issues of life. Prayers are not answered. And sometimes the purpose of God will cause pain and trouble our hearts. The Bible said in the book of John 12 from verse 27, Jesus said, my soul is troubled. See that? Now my soul is troubled. Can you give me the number, New King James? He said, my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. 
But for this purpose I came to this hour. My soul is troubled. Many days in your life as a Christian, you will face troubled soul. But what did the Christ say? Father, save me from this hour. The hours where prayers are not answered, Father, save me from this hour. The hours where you are tempted beyond limits. Will you at that moment deny your faith? Will you at that moment say wrong words to the Father? Or the time you are tempted, the time you are tried, the time you are provoked for the sake of this relationship I'm talking about, you'll be able to say, Father, save me from this hour. Anytime you go into big temptation, big trials, don't forget this prayer. Save me from this hour. There are, there are hours where the load will be too heavy on you. I know what I'm saying. There are hours where the burden will be too much on you. There are hours when it seems as if the heaven is closed and your prayers are not being answered. There are hours where you will feel as if God is far away from you. There are hours like that. The good news is, it is not forever, it's just hours. Jesus is showing us the greatest decision to make in such hour. He just prayed, Father, save me from this hour. Save me. Because it takes an hour for someone to sell his birthright like Esau. Because of hunger, it takes an hour to tell your brother, give me food, let me eat. And your brother says, you will give me your birthright. He says, what are you talking about birthright? I'm talking about my life. You are talking about birthright. Give me food, take the birthright. It takes an hour to sell a birthright. It takes an hour to deny God. Don't forget this prayer. Father, save me from this hour. Are you hearing me? This, this, because now you go through a lot in your marriage, in your relationship, that should make you quit that relationship. These prayers will also save you because it's just temporary. Father, many people have, because of an hour like that, break relationship, betray relationship, shattered love to the ground. Lord, save me from this hour. That will be your prayer this season. Whatever you are going through, Lord, save me from this hour. Are you hearing me? The Bible said, in the perilous time, in the perilous days, and in the perilous time, one of the traces you will find is that the love of many will was cold. Your love for God. You can be able to exchange God for anything. And we are in the perilous time. First Timothy, uh, Second Timothy 3 from verse 1. Signs of the perilous time. I said the love of many will ask. We say, but know this that in the last days, perilous times will come. Those hours you have to say, Lord, save me from this hour. He said, For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. When this kind of love is found in you, you can't love God. When the love of money have oversaturated you. There's no way you will love God, I'm telling you. You can't love God and love money. The perilous time, people will prioritize God, uh, prioritize money than God. In the perilous time. See, so I've been serving God. Where, what, is, what is in my account? You 
can act anyway just to get that money and forget God. So the love of many will was cold, cold. They will not be, they will not even, they will not be passionate about God again. I remember I said to you, God is love-minded, relationship-minded, love-based. Everything you are doing for God must be on the center of love. Number two is that many will deny God in the perilous time. Many will deny God. Matthew 10, 33. Jesus said, whosoever deny me before men, He said, but whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father, who is in heaven. Do not think I have come to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. So in perilous time, we will deny God. We will deny the Christ. That's why you hear somebody say, uh, um, is it that you come to the to your business today that is Sunday or go and worship God? You say Sundays are many, don't worry, I'll, I'll come to my work tomorrow. Let, let us really check why you are here now. If you had a business appointment, will you be here now? If somebody said there's a contract for you now of 20 million dollars, if you have not been tested like this. If your love has not been tested, <laughs> then you are not yet in a relationship. Your love will be tested. Are you hearing me? <laughs> Many years ago, we started when we were in ministry, I think it's 2017 or 18. On Thursday, Thursday morning. I got a bad report. You see, my mother had accident and she broke her two legs and the car spoiled beyond repair. And she was admitted in the hospital. While she was there, Thursday morning, Thursday what? Friday. And Friday's service. It would be very nice to just give excuses and say, no, on Friday, I'm not around. Pastors, take this. I, went, I came that Friday. Nobody knew. I preached very well, soundly. God bear me witness that there's nobody that would die in my life that would make me to say I will not serve. I'm telling you, nobody. I, <laughs> you are not hearing me. There's no one. Because I'm not doing, I'm not doing ministry because I'm in ministry. I found love first. It's, it's love before ministry. It's not ministry before love. Are you hearing me? I'm not here serving, holding my key or praying and fasting because God called me for ministry. I loved him first. I, I want to correct a perspective from your mind now. Because if there's anything you put before God, before your love for God, you are an allot. That is allotry. You are, not, you are not yet in a relationship with him. I came, I preached. Nobody even knew. It was when she was healed, I even shared it as a testimony in the church. I'm telling you, there's no one that I will lose in my life today. Which my mother is the dearest person in my heart. And I ignored it as if nothing happened. Came to church. I 
I say, Mother, I know I love you, but I love God more. Amen. I felt pain throughout that day, just that day. And I moved on. Even if it was that Friday, I would still come and teach. I would still come and do my work. I didn't find ministry. I found God first. That's what I'm, I'm trying to listen. I, I, I want to bring you out of that ritual you have been. The ritual of, oh Lord, some people lost their job in a day or lost business all of a sudden or lost somebody all of a sudden. They say, I'm not going to church today. I, I don't feel like it. I feel pain. I need to mourn. <laughs> you don't know who you are. You don't know where you are from. You don't know why you are here. That's what it shows. Because if you know where you come from and who you are, you will know that you ought to be doing your father's business. When John the Baptist died, the Bible said Jesus went to, when they told him, he went to a secluded place. While he was there, the crowd looked for him. They found him there. The Bible says when he saw them, he felt compassion for them and started praying for them. I thought he would say, go, 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 see, like today. Eh? I just need my rest. No. Because in John 9 from verse 4, he said, I must do the work of he who sent me. Why it is day. That is where God is calling us to. If I, if I, if I, I, I can boldly tell you that the reason why many Christians are suffering, they don't love God. They are allotry with God. They want things from God. They don't love Him. And when you, when you act as an allot with God, you receive what an allot receive. They, there's what you can do for your wife, and there's what you can do for an allot. Write this. All the blessings, all the prepared blessings of God are only accessible through love. All the prepared blessings of God are accessible to only the lovers of God, true lovers of God, true lovers. All the prepared blessings. There's a prepared blessing. He prepared a table for me in the presence of mine. There's a prepared blessing. All the prepared blessings of God are accessible only to true lovers of God. For it is written in 1 Corinthians 2 from verse 9. It says, Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have it entered the heart of man. The things which God has prepared for those who love him. You see that? For those who love him. Everything we are crying, laboring and pursuing in life is hidden in love of God. I'm telling you. When you are still chasing after things, laboring for things, just to make it for selfish purpose, we labor in vain, we suffer for vain glory. We toil and weary ourselves. But there are some things prepared in the realm of rest. So Paul said, labor in love, your labor in love. Don't be laboring to get this. Labor to love God. Oh, labor. Labor. There are things that have been prepared for you that eyes have not seen, that ears have not heard. But God will, it is only available and accessible to true lovers. I did not find myself as a Christian before I became serious. I did not find myself as an usher. Or as a prophet, I didn't find myself in all this. I first found love. The ultimate of our faith is love. Let us find love first. If you have not found love, don't serve, don't worship. It's a lottery. Don't carry your body to church. Those are vain sacrifices when it is not love prepared. Don't give me anything if it is not love prepared. Because anything you do that is not prepared by love is cause. When the arm robber comes into your house and says, Hey, everyone, lie down here, lie down here. And 
Give me your money. And you, it's you that took your money and gave to that person. Are you giving out of love or pain? Because that money has become a cost to that person. Any service that you are giving to God out of force, it is a cost service. And God does not want it. God cannot assess it. Because he said his eyes cannot build iniquity. When you check our hearts, with this test tube I've given to you now, with this litmus, paper of love, how many worship does God accept? How many prayers? How many praise? How many giving? do you think you have accepted? Are you hearing me? Because can I shock you? God is not in need. He's not in need of your money. He's not in need of your time. He already have angels that are worshipping him internally, ceaselessly. I want us to rearrange the relationship. It is not in the beginning prophets. In the beginning usher. In the beginning I go to church. No. In the beginning I love God first. It has to be from the beginning should be love. It's not I'm serving because I love God. No. Love first. Tell me about love first. When the disciples came to Jesus in John 5, from verse 35, he said, My food, my meat is to do the will. Look for it for me, please. My meat is to do the will of he who sent me. Okay, John 4, 34. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of he who sent me and to finish the, his work. My food. My hunger. That's what he's trying to say there. Listen, you are the Christ too. Don't think it's only one Christ that we have. He's now in you. Your food your hunger must to do his work. My, my food is to do the work of or the, the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Mm -hmm. He said, do, not, do you not say there are still four months, then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the feed, for they are already white for harvest. And he who reap, receive wages and gathers fruit for eternal life that both he who sow and he who reap may rejoice together. For in this saying is true, one sows and another reap. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans believed in, okay, others have labored. You have entered, that means you are not supposed to be laboring now. All this annual labor, we are laboring in vain, Pursuing unnecessary things. He said, if we pursue love for him, everything we are yearning to get is already available. Because he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every other thing will be added. May you not hear this and still live your life as you have been living it before. I love God. I love him. I love him. I'm not, I'm not just a prophet. I'm not a pastor. Because I will not be judged as a prophet. I will not be judged as a pastor or as a Christian. I will be judged according to the major of my love. The major of my love for him.
and anyone you love wants to hear you one day say to them, I love you. Your wife that you love at home wants to hear you say it. Don't pretend as then you know I love you. No, no, she doesn't know. She needs to hear. God wants to hear you say, I love you. Are you hearing me? You know, many people, it's long here they told their wife, I love you. Because you are meditating on all the wrong she has done. Then the day she said, you don't love me. Say, you know I love you. you. She doesn't know. Tell her. And that's why I say love is commitment. You don't say it when you feel like. You even say it when you don't feel like. That's the meaning of commitment. Yes. Love is a what? Commitment. Yes. Not the day she dressed well, she cooked nice food for you. Then, oh, I love you. No. It is commitment. Paul said, even if he's in chain, he said, the word of the Lord is not in chain. These are men that truly love God, not because of what they have, not because of what God can offer them. In the pit, they love God. In the prison, they love God. In pain, in sickness, they love God. Elisha, Elisha the prophet that you know very well, <laughs> That made Acts air to float. That people, a man died, and his friends were carrying him to go and throw him in, in, a, in to go and bury him. Now they're trying to because when they saw the enemy coming, they now they have to throw the dead body to run for their life. Immediately they threw that person, touch a light, just bone. The person woke up, bone woke. A dead man. Now listen. Do you know that that Elisha died sick? The same person that is born is healing somebody to raise the dead. He died sick. He could not heal himself. We are talking about love. Love suffers long. Love is patient. Before you give your body to be burnt, that's what Paul is saying. Give love first. Before you give yourself to persecution, give yourself to give your heart first. You see, this our Christianity of nowadays it does not have weight. Is is a is a a flaw bred generation of Christianity. If they poke you some more, you 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 forget yourself, forget your faith, because it's the perilous time. And in the perilous time again, number three is that people will be lovers of pleasure. Go to that second Timothy again. Is it three? We're in, we're ready. Second Timothy three. From verse four, I think so. Lovers of pleasure. Who is at the console there? Second Timothy, you are in John again. He said, people will be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. So your love for pleasure can melt, terminate your love for God. You can't love God and pleasure. You can't love God and money. Are you seeing all this love I'm counting now? This evil love I'm saying. That's why your love for God is dying. You can't love pleasure and love God. You can't. Then he said, another one said, you, men will be, you will love the world, love of the world, the love of the world. After love out of pleasure, he said, love of the world. First John 2, from verse 15. These are the things that are attacking your love for God. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the loss of it, 
but he who does the will of God abides forever. So you can see all this love I'm counting. First of all, your love, this love God is looking for. The first attack is that the devil will make your love wax cold. Number two, it will make you a lover of pleasure. Number three, it will make you a lover of the world. You want, are, are you hearing me? And as you are loving other things, the things God prepared for you is hiding. You are not receiving it. You are saying, why, why am I, why, why am I, why am I serving God and yet it's not blessing me. He said, these things, these blessings are prepared for those who love him. Now you have already given those love. That same love God is asking you for. You have showered it on the world, on pleasures, lovers of money. Are you seeing what I'm seeing here? So this kind of teaching now should make you overhaul your Christian life again. Go and sit down. Stop deceiving yourself. Have you sat down to look at your life before? Have you sat down to really estimate your life? Before you appear before God in the judgment seat, judge yourself. In the last days, in the perilous times, many also will be offended with God. So that is the amen I give to you now. Hmm? <laughs> they are saying different things. Some say four, some say five. It's five. Your love will was good. You deny the Christ. Love of the world, love of pleasure, and offended in God. Matthew 11 from verse 6. He said, Blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Because you will be tempted and tried to the point of you being offended with him. Are you hearing me? So the greatest commandment of all, the Trilomi 6, from verse 4, Yeah, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, meaning you are one with him. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. That is the greatest commandment. In Mark 12, from verse 29 they asked Jesus Mark 12 29 Jesus answered him the first of all commandments first somebody say first before <laughs> before giving before uh, praying before fasting he said the first of all commandments is yea O city of truth yea O believers the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your hearts. All. So it cannot share you loving money. It cannot share a place of you loving the pleasures of this world. It cannot share a place of you loving the world. You see that? It cannot share. The love of God does not share. Anything sharing the love of God is called lottery. How do you feel when your spouse cheats on you? That's how God feels when you cheat on him with money, the love of money, love of the world, and love of pleasure. How do you feel when you caught your, your spouse cheating on you with many people and they will have children and you don't know? You hate cheating. It's God that put it in your heart. It's God that formed you like that to be self-centered over your spouse, self-entitled. You just want all of that person, 
that is how God wants all of you. He's trying to explain how he feels when you cheat on him with money, with love of life, with pleasures. Are you know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. You must love him with all, all, not some of your heart, not part of your heart, all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. This is the first commandment. Tell God, I don't want to play this allotry anymore. That's how you can be sincere. You have been playing the allotry. God will always send his prophets in those days. When Israel go and start worshipping other idols, other God. Say, tell them to stop playing the allotries. They play the allotry on that trees. Secret places where nobody's seen them. Those secret places today are your heart. And you play the allotry with the pleasures of life, love of money, love of the world. Are you hearing me? Are you looking for all your breakthrough is in love for God? I'm telling you, everything you are looking for your wealth, good health, prosperity. That's the meaning of eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not come to you. You've not even tasted anything that God has prepared. But this can only be assessed by cultivating a sincere love for him. When it is only when money comes into your account that you say, thank you, Jesus. Money is your God. You love money more than him. But when there's no money in the account, I say, thank you, Father. I don't care what is going on in my life. You are all that matter. Many don't go to church anymore because they have been offended. Meaning, who they were serving before was their pastor or their church. They never had the love of God. You can't have the love of God and not be in his house, in his sanctuary. David said, one thing I have desired that I should be in the house of God. I have desired. That's the sign of love you are only connected to God to the major you love him are you hearing me do you, do you hear what I said I said you are, we are only connected to God to the what to the major we love him God is only connected to us what bond you and God together just as in marriage sometimes you use ring to bond both of you what bound you and God relationship is your depth of love for him. Love is a bond. Love is a what? Love is a what? It's a bond. So love is more powerful than attraction. Sometimes you look some relationship, you say, how can this man be, be with this woman? Or how can this woman be with this man? It's love. Love is more stronger than attraction. Why does the monkey love that ugly monkey? Love is more stronger than appearance.
no matter how your child look like, there's still that love for that child. Other child, other people might say, ah, this child, look old. You, you, don't, you don't see it. You only see love. Because the strongest bond is love. If truly you love God, it means you won't see pain again. You won't even see the temptation you are going through. You won't even see the trial anymore. I'm telling you, because love is stronger than anything that is around you. Any pain, any tribulation. So Paul said, what can separate us from the love of God? Is it trial? Not even persecution. Not even angels. Not pain. What can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. Not even death. Somebody died in my family. Oh, hey, my uncle died. My mommy died. My, my sister died. That's why I'm not coming to church. That's why I'm not going to serve God. That's why, what, what are you saying? Romans 38. Eight, uh, Romans 8, 38. Go up from 37. Start from what can separate us from love, please. Who is in that council there? You are sleeping. Go, go up, please. He said, who shall separate us? Who? What can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? See them, they are listed there. Please put that scripture. Who is there? He said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who love us. So if you truly love God, joblessness will not shake you. Famine will not shake you. Hunger will not shake you. Tribulation will not shake you. Persecution will not shake you. Trial will not shake you. Nothing will shake you. God does not even want to share. Say you love your wife more than him or your children more than him. He doesn't want that. Who told you that woman is for you? She's not your wife. It's just... It's a time-based something. That person belongs to God. Even your children, they are not your own. You are just a caretaker. You can't love what God gave to you more than who gave you. We need to rearrange. We need to balance the book. According to accountants, they say balancing of book. You have to balance your spiritual book. Don't put anything first before God. It is a lottery. Father, rescue me from a lottery. Pray that prayer. Yonder place, where the light is shining bright. Jesus Christ is gonna make all things alright. In His time, He's gonna make me really see. Call upon Him, call upon Him, rescue my heart from financial hollow tree. Kana hollow tree.
Rescue me from my lottery. Living with Jesus on the other side. Never no more will you die. Oh, living with Jesus on the other side. Mm, never no more will you die. Father, rescue me from all lottery, whatever I put before you. Any area my love is waxing cold in my relationship with you. Lord, revive my love for you. Disconnect me from the love of the world, the love of money and the love of pleasure that have saturated my heart. For I must love you with all my heart, with all my soul. Like a cloud in the sky, I was drifting, searching for something I could never find. I've tried everything this world could offer, still I couldn't find no peace of mind. Remember the words my mama told me. So you never make it alone. Just take Jesus as your best friend. And he stay with you till the end. Oh, oh, oh. Joy is knowing Jesus loves you. Happiness is knowing he's mine. Is knowing where you going when you die. Living with Jesus on the other side. Oh, 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 oh. living with Jesus on the other side. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, hey. died for you and me I'm from the very very day he took all my sins away oh, oh, oh. Joe is knowing Jesus loves you happiness is knowing he's mine and hope is knowing where you going when you die. Living with Jesus on the other side. Oh, 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 living with Jesus on the other side. It's gonna be a better day. Never no more will you die. Oh, oh, oh living with Jesus on the other side. Never no more. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. In Jesus. 
Jesus name. Say, oh Lord, say, oh Lord. wherever I've invested my heart to the love of the world, love of pleasures, love of money, Father, rescue my heart. Deliver my heart from the love of money, from the love of pleasure, from the love of the world. Every strange love that will make me deny you, deny my faith, remove such love from my heart. I don't want to follow you in our lottery. I don't want to worship in our lottery. I don't want to serve with our lottery. Rescue my heart. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Jesus name are you taking what you are hearing serious yes, huh yes, so whatever you learned from the beginning of your faith that is not what you just had today maybe the first thing you had when you gave your life to Christ is that he gave money he heals, he delivers. Yes, all those things are available. But those are not the core of the relationship. Those are not the bond of the relationship. There's something that comes first before those things. And that, that love stands even when everything fades away. Healing will fade away. Money will fade away. Marriage will fade away. Careers whatever so that your relationship cannot you god cannot be bound to you with need or with money are you hearing me god cannot be bound to you because he can heal you healing cannot bond you and god money cannot bond you and god houses marriage whatever you're asking god for it can't bond you and god only what can bond you and God is love. The Bible said in the book of Colossians 3, from verse 15, it said, above all, from verse 14, above all, 14, above all, all these things, put on love, above all, above all, above all, above us, car, marriage, health, breakthrough, miracle, signs, wonders, above all put on love which is the bond that is the bond that bond you and God are you hearing me I will surprise you that whatever you ask God when you don't love him he will not give you you won't have it Listen, this is automatic. Once you love him, everything just comes to you. You begin to attract blessings. In James 4, from verse 3, he said, you ask and do not receive. You see that? <laughs> you ask and do not receive. 
because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Can we read it again? Let's read it together. Hey, hey, look at it. Don't, don't look as if you are looking somewhere else. Look at your, watch your screen, watch your screen. A miracle is going on on the screen. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, I want to let it go. Again, again, again. For the last time. Verse 4, let's see verse 4. He said, okay, let's continue. One thread to go. Uh -huh. <laughs> it shocked some people. That if you are a friend of the world, you are an enemy of God. And he called you, he called those kind of people adulterer and adulteress. It's not because he slept with somebody's wife. He's saying loving the world is that you are committing adultery against God that is your husband. You see that? Your relationship with God needs to be need to be checked. Need to go under a check. You can't love God and your life will not change. You can't love God and not be patient for your prayers to be answered. I told you the first attribute of love is patience and long suffering. You say you love him, you be patient. You follow him in patience. Relationship with God is held by the patience you have for him and the patience he had for you, he also have for you. How many of us? Are channeling our love from things to God, from pleasures to God, from money to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Today, your life is experiencing a new turn. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every step that I take, every moment I'm away. Lord, I have your, your way. Lord, I give you. Lord, Lord I, I give, give you my heart. Oh, I give give you so I live for you, I live, live for you, oh, every step the right day, every moment I'm away, Lord have your way, Lord have your way in me, Lord. listen, the deeper you love him, the more you manifest his power and his glory. The deeper you love him, the more people begin to see you like him. God is hiding in every man. 
God is buried in every man, but is revealed when we love him. When people look at your eyes, they will see Jesus in your eyes. When you now begin to love him. It was Riyad Bonki that told the story that one day, blessed memory, one day he went to a place where they were selling instruments. And the man there said, called him aside and said, I don't know. There's something different about you. He said, your eyes, I am seeing Jesus in your eyes. You look like Jesus. And he said, when he got home, Jesus now said, yes, when you love me, I look, your eyes become my window. I'm looking through you. Listen, God wants to use your hand. He wants to use your eyes. He wants to use your mouth. He's, right, he's, he's in you. He's there. But when we love the world, it becomes stagnant in us. But when we love him, we begin to glow him out to our world. We begin to reveal him to our world. Today, I'm sending you on an assignment. Go and write a love letter to God. And tell him, Lord, intentionally I'm telling you what I'm telling you now. I have given time to money more than you before. Given time to ungodly relationships, habits, weaknesses, pleasures, and things that phase away i have put i have i have given my love to them today you my lover i am returning to you and i'm giving you all my love again i write it sincerely from the depth of your heart Are you hearing me? I will make my heart your dwelling place. I will seek your holiness. Come, Father, come, Son. Come. Let God sit in the center of your heart. Amen. If you want to be rich, you want to be blessed, you want to enjoy life, fire God with love. Lavish it on Him. I'm telling you. <laughs> you don't know what I'm saying. Lavish it on Him like no man's business. Waste it on Him. Try what I'm telling you. All those things we call love that, you know, when you first say you are in a relationship, you begin to lavish gift on somebody. And after some time, it will go cold. Mm -mm. Lavish God with love. You will see. <laughs> you will run away from blessing, I'm telling you. You, you say, this our life is easy. Believe me. God does not beg for things. God attracts things. 
God, are you hearing me? Because you, once you become a God like him, you begin to attract things. You don't beg for things. What is your Christianity centered on? What is the center of your relationship with God? What is the center of your, of your Christianity? We have to probe your heart now. Let's probe you. Let's probe you. Let's, let's see. Is it that you are looking for crowd? You are looking for money? You are looking for breakthrough? You are looking for business? Those things, you have put them before God. You, it's, it's, not, it's not correct. The arrangement is wrong. It's like a child wearing a right shoe in his left feet. That's what you are doing. Shoe. Are you hearing me? Today marks a new beginning in your life. Amen. I discovered in my race with God, in my work with God, that the more I began to pay attention to how can I love you more? Why I'm spending time to know how to love him more, laboring in love for him, is arranging everything for me and the line fell for me in pleasant places it can happen to you like that not husband first not wife first not job first not money first not children first not marriage first as good as they are not job first god first you must love the Lord your God with all your heart. I love God very much. Even if today now I'm not a pastor, I will still be deep in service. It's not a... It's not... I love him more than my ministry. Are you hearing me? Yes. So all those things you have been angry with God about, money, I lost my job. Oh, oh I've not gotten married yet. Well, I'm looking all those need. Put them behind you. If you love him, there will not be any need again. Can you see the mathematics? Can you solve that equation? Can you see that equation? Asking God for things before loving Him is also somebody saying, Imagine you wore this your clothes prepared for church before you now enter the bathroom to say you want to bath. You are with this clothes I'm wearing now. I say, Okay, I'm preparing for church. Then I wore it, enter the bathroom and start bathing. 
it is you, we are living the reverse life. That's what the devil does. It makes us live the reverse. It will look as if Christianity is a scam if you continue like this. I promise you that. One day you will walk this journey and anywhere you hear pastor, you hear Jesus, you hear God, you will curse these names because you walked wrongly. When you travel a road for so long and you don't see where it's taking you to, you become frustrated with that road, you will curse that road. If you continue like this, one day you will deny Jesus. Because you have facts to say, I worked with him for 20 years. I didn't say anything in my life. Because no matter how speed you drive in the wrong way, you will never arrive at your destination. Touching the foundation of your faith. Amen. Yes, the foundation of your Christianity is what I'm touching now. Amen. Because every other thing should be built on what I'm teaching you now. Amen. Every other thing you are doing. So the truth is, many people, our foundation of this faith, some is, if you don't accept Jesus, you will go to hell. Fear of that. Some is, he will give you money. Some is he will give you good health. Different promises you got, they are not lies, but they are not the foundation. You are built, you built on a wrong foundation. The all mark foundation that God wants us to have within is love. If it is not love, it is fake. I'm not teaching a nice sermon. I'm speaking God's message. There's, there, there's sermon that make you happy and laugh and shout right on. <coughs> Many years ago, a man went to a church in the afternoon when he returned. In a very big crowd, he came back and said, Wow, nice salmon. In the evening, he said, Nice, what a wonderful salmon. In the evening, he went to Charles Spongeon Ministry. And when he finished listening, when he came out, he said, What a wonderful Jesus. Any message that didn't point you to that name, or to love him is just a wonderful, is a wonderful sermon. They are wonderful message and they are wonderful sermon. Message impact. Sermon stimulates, excites you. I repeat again, it is Jacob that became Israel. But remember, the name Jacob means supplanting. And Israel got the promise. It is, the promise is for Israel, but it's the same person. The promise was for Israel, but yet it's the same person that was answering Jacob. The promise is for lovers of God. It's the same you that promise is for but is when you become Israel, not Jacob. <laughs> when you are still supplanting, pretending, sharing your love for other things, 
you are still in the realm of Jacob. There have to be that change. That day he wrestled with God. And God touched the hip bone of what he has trusted in. I say, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. He said, no, today you are Israel. Believe me, your blessings and all these things you have been crying for is waiting for the Israel version of you, not the Jacob. Because if God bless you in greed, your testimony will produce more greedy people. If God bless Jacob, which is the supplanter, it will be children of supplanters. So he said, no, Israel, the prince of God. So it will be children of Israel, not children of Jacob. So when you are testifying, speaking, everybody will be connecting with your love not with what you got. You connect with your love for God. Because God really wants us to connect to him with love, not with what we got from him. Are you hearing me? Listen to this message again, I, I repeat again, if you continue like this, when you travel very far in your life, you will call God a scam, I promise you. If you don't do what I'm saying now, if you don't reorder your step, you don't check what I'm saying now, I give you a few years, you will call God a scam. Because there are many people that were stronger than you in faith, today they are calling God scam. Because that is how they traveled. They crash land in the journey. Their faith got shipwrecked. I told of a story. Because many of our faith are already shipwrecking now. We are just carrying our body here. We have given God time. You know, you know what I'm saying. You know you ask yourself, what am I even serving for? Why am I going to church? You know, you know your secret. You see, God is hearing that one more than what you are doing here now. Because he said, I'm the God that sees in secret. And that secret is the state of your heart. Are we ready to find God again? Yes. So Jesus asked a question. He said, seek the Lord now that he may be found. Let the wicked man forsake his will and the righteous man his thought. That's what the prophet has said. I cried. Seek the Lord now that he may be found. God should be sought after. God is not everywhere. He should be sought after. God is deeper than gold. See gold, that way they are looking for gold or minerals on the ground. God is more deeper. Just as you sought, you, we seek gold with everything we can. To really connect to God, God is deeper than God. Are you hearing me? Yes. 
I want you to, to enter your heart. We are having a, a, a discussion now. I'm not preaching. I'm talking to you. Because we'll see the kind of Christianity you are in your children. Let's see how your children will be. Whether they will love God. Or you taught them to say, you are crying every night, God, why me? God does not answer. Those are what you are premeditating. That's the tape the children are hearing every day. The day you do what I say now, the day you take this step, that day you died. That's the day you have died. And now it's not Christ that is living, no longer you. Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ. Not every Christian should say that. If you are still living for yourself, or you still love the world at pleasure and money, don't say that. I've been crucified with Christ. It's not I that live again, but Christ that lives in me. Are you hearing me? Pray for your heart. Lay your right hand on your chest. Say, O Lord, let my heart be converted to fit only you, to be your resting place, to be your dwelling place. I don't want to share you with anything with anyone. with anyone. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Long ago, I read about the story of a man, and I preached about it. He, he was following God, but him and Billy Graham were friends. His name was Charles Templeton. He had charisma. He was a preacher. He could fill a stadium of more than 10,000 people. For many years, he was a preacher. He, he, you know Billy Graham? Uh, Billy Graham? He, he, was, he was like learning from him, but they were friends. They started a fellowship together, that um, scripture union. They started it together. He went to many crusades. He did many revival. Then one day, he just said, God is not real. He said, if truly God is real, why are people sick? If truly God is real, why are people suffering? And he resigned from being a pastor, and he became an atheist. Somebody that had filled the stadium. In fact, in those days, he won a Nobel Prize, just as they give Grammy Award to musicians now. He won a Nobel Prize of the man most used by God in their days. 
the most used man of God. After filling stadiums, preaching for like 15 years, he became an atheist. He said God does not exist. And before he died, he wrote a book, Farewell to God, meaning God, bye-bye. That's to show you that if you don't correct your step, if the foundation of this relationship is not corrected, if it is built on, you, you were looking at chastity, you see the ministry, you see people, you see crowd, you see him performing miracle, you see his charisma, you think he has a solid foundation. There was no solid foundation there. The foundation was all about ministry. But the foundation should be love. And one day he crashed and he died an atheist. Farewell to God. If you don't correct your relationship today, hear what I'm telling you. I look at my face, even heaven and earth will bear me witness of what I'm saying today. If you don't correct the motive and the foundation of your relationship today, you will even behave more than chastisement and you will tell God, tell Jesus, tell all, everything called church or Holy Spirit, farewell to you. Because Psalm says, Psalm 11, 3, if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? That foundation should be love. Today we saw Billy Graham. Not a lot of charisma. Just a message of repentance. He finished well. But Charles told God, farewell. Farewell to God. Remember this day. If you don't deal with your relationship properly, if you don't put it in order today, the Bible says today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. If you don't check that relationship today, tomorrow, there's every possibility for you to tell God, farewell. Thank you for everything I've heard about you. Thank you for the journey. As it is today, I'm making a U-turn. Longevity will not change it. I've been in the faith for 30 years, 40 years, it won't change it. I pray for you. May you not lose your faith. I pray for you. May your foundation be corrected. May your, may your foundation be out of love. Amen. May it not be in zeal and passion. May it not be because of what you will get. Let the foundation be of love. Amen. For when the foundation of Peter was of love, even when he denied Jesus, he still came back. And Jesus asked him one question. Peter, son of Bar Jordan, lovest thou me? That is the foundation. Lovest thou me? When he said, yes, I love you, then he said, feed my sheep. Don't do anything if you don't love me. Before you feed, love. Before you even give me, love. Before you come to church, love. The foundation should be love. The Lord is reviving your love for him. Amen. He's rekindling your love for him. Amen. He's awakening your love for him. Amen. He's strengthening your love for him. Amen. Now, the, the Bible says your love was cold. That means it got weak. It's not that you didn't have it before. It went weak. So pray one prayer. Father, strengthen my love again for you. Strengthen my love. Strengthen my love.
Mark a new beginning of your relationship. This will bring many testimony in your life. To bring many transformation, many change in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Testimonies before we go that uh, into other things. Let's hear our testimonies, and um, you must always take your testimony serious. Every testimony God gave to you is a seed. 
When you testify, it becomes a tree. When you hold it in your hands, it dies as a tree. It becomes dormant. So God is expecting us to always appreciate Him through our testimonies and return like the one leper that came back to say to give glory to Jesus for cleansing him and Jesus said were they not saying that were healed so let that not be the question Jesus is asking concerning you where are the other nine that was the question he was asking. Where are the other people I blessed? Are they sitting on their testimony? So don't allow anybody to remind you to testify when God has visited you. Are you hearing me? Because your visitation is a strength to someone else. Strengthens other people. for you. Who came with you? Because the tablet you are taking is not working. The medication is not working. Your erection is, an, is, is under attack. Thank you, Father. You have loose palm can. Thank you, Father. Because God wants to answer you with a baby boy. Thank you, Father. tell you they say my womb is retroverted hmm? they said my womb is retroverted like it is turned it's facing the other side it's upside down yes hmm? yes they say if they if there's there's semen it go back even after Meeting, it goes back, it does not enter. Yes. It's not your womb. It's not your womb. It's beyond womb issue. Are you hearing me? Thank you, sir. Because You had a vision when somebody was operating your womb. Your stomach, you saw yourself in on the bed. Yes, sir. A spiritual doctor was operating on you. So what do they want to do? They want to operate you or what do they want to do? They say for now, as long as I'm not having much pain, it can stay. But if it continues, they will have to operate me. After a year, you see testimony in your life. Yeah. Please watch me, okay? I'm the one talking, it's not in. You 
one part of your body is sleeping. Yes. Huh? Yes, this side of my left side is always painful. Huh? It's always painful, this side. Even after church on Friday service night, I have too much cramps in my legs. I didn't sleep the whole night. I was walking around the room. Because you, what your body is telling you is that you are half dead and half alive. That's what I'm always thinking. Huh? I don't see myself alive. Mm, you are dead. You are I, dead. I, I, I fear for my life. I have that fear in my heart. So part of you is already in the spirit realm as dead. It's already registered among the dead. So it's just a part of you yes, man of God. that is alive. Understand, man of God. Pray for me, man of God. Please deliver me. That's why I'm here. Because I saw sudden death just on the bed. It's canceled today. Amen. In Jesus' name. You are living a second chance life. Are you hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing Who came you. with you? My mother. You are dead and came back to life. child is a problem. I don't know that man of God. Huh? I don't know that man of God. You don't know what? You said sorry, come again man this of God. This child is a problem. Starting from when she was in your womb. Okay. Okay. I hear you. You thought, they thought she was dead because you bleed. Yes. Yes. Why she was there? Yes. I did. So they even thought she was gone. Okay. So she's living a second life. She has two mothers. You are not her only mother. I, I, she, she, she has a spiritual mother. There is a woman that comes to you in your dream and take care of you. Yes. You don't, you don't know the face. Yes, man of God. Yeah? Yes. Yes. What is yes? Yes, I, I do see the woman in my dreams. What does she come to do? Takes care of me. Let me, let me, let me advise you. Listen, if you come before God, there's, there's every possibility you'll be trembling, but I advise you, don't talk anyhow. Just be quiet. It's better you quiet and looking at me. If you don't understand what I'm saying, quiet. Ask the Holy Spirit to remind you. Don't come and say, I don't know what you are saying. I don't remember. You will short the vision. Don't, don't be coming here and be jiggy 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 jiggy. Because this one have another, you are not the mother. The real mother is in the spirit. She have a spiritual mother. Jesus. Are you, have you told your mom before? 
No, I haven't. Huh? I haven't. What? Tell her, what do you used to see? I, I was not aware that it was not my mom that was in my dreams. But, uh, of course, uh, her face was not clear, so I just assumed it was her. The face of the person you saw was not clear. What does yes. the person do? What happened in that dream? Um, she just takes care of uh, the daily duties. Uh, we just live together. Sometimes the house chores, the cooking. Uh, and you always call her mommy? Yes. She say, my daughter. You don't used to see your mother's face. It's not your mother's face you used to see. The person's face, you don't know. But he's taking care of you. So this one, you are just here. This girl was exchanged since. She has been exchanged. Help me, men of God. Help me, please. Amen. God will help you. It's fine. That's all right. God will help you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Me? Because when she was in your womb, they saw her. And they changed her. If, they, if, if you understand the word called banje, is in Nigeria word where uh, somebody a spirit enters somebody's womb. It's not really that human being. So this is who she is. She's an Ogbanji child. She has another mother. Because the time you are supposed to say it's time for you to enjoy your daughter, she will go back to the world she belongs. She does not belong to this world. Help us, men of God. Help us. <laughs> now the mother has taken her brain. She can't understand the school anymore. I, 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 yes, yes, men of God. I, I did not pass my first semester, um, which is why I'm, I'm back here uh, with my parents to try and see what's the way forward. You fail your first semester? Yes, in university. So they say you can't continue again? No, I have to wait uh, an entire year to retry again. You have to wait for a full year? Yes. Because you know you spend time reading. Yes, ma'am. But once God. you get to the exam, is that you are dizzy? Yes, yes, Or you can't remember God. anything again? Yes, I can't remember. And I take time to uh, remember the things. And by the time that I do actually remember, the exam time is over. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be restored. Are we? How are you? There's an exam. You kept on writing and you were not getting it and you stopped. Yes. Hmm? Yes, uh, I was uh, studying uh, as a, a fitter and tenor, but I didn't finish uh, actually my level four. So I just went for my trade test because I kept failing. You are studying what? Uh, fitter and tenor. Fitter and tenor? Yes. What was that? It's an engineering course. Uh, so when you were failing it, you decided to study? Because you were always feeling the exam. Yeah, so I just went to work so I could, uh, after I uh, gained some years, then I could go for my trade test. Because it's a pattern in your life. Yeah. You don't finish anything. Yeah, there's too much stagnation in my life. I start and don't finish. And you have many things you keep on starting. You start this one, go to the... Huh? Very true, Prophet. Everything I start and... Recently, I had um, an, a dream. I was on the bus to work and... 
uh, I just heard you have a spirit of stagnation and I have something always moving at my back here. I have a back movement and everything I start, it doesn't... I just start and then halfway or just when I, about, when I just started and I, I drop it. You had, in I, the, you, had, you had inside the boss that you had spirit of stagnation? Yes. Because where are you from? Namibia. You came from Namibia? Yes. Because uh, you can't have peace until there is a thunder stone. Your, fa your father's family, there was a spiritualist. So you are you are a born spiritualist. So you are you are a sangoma. The only the only thing that works for you now, go and look for those stones, and be bringing rain. Are you hearing me? No. Huh? Ah, uh, no, I can. Um, go on, no, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm helping you. Don't you need direction? <laughs> I need direction. That's why I came, bro. And that's the only way for you. <laughs> No, because, but I want to serve God. Because you know how you feel if there's thunder, if thunder strike. Like last night, uh, a man of God helped me to stay at his place and there was heavy thunder and the light came into the room and it disturbed me really. It, Where you were staying yesterday? Yes, uh, uh, Santonia. It, uh, a, a thunder came into your room. Yes. You see what I'm telling you? <laughs> you think I'm... <laughs> so I'm telling you now, you are, you are a thunder god. Oh. That person that was existing, that you came as, used to bring rain and used to cause thunder. So what... What the sign you saw yesterday, because if I'm telling you this thing now, and you don't get any sign, you will talk any up. Prophecy is not your mates. It's a message. It's a coded message from a realm deeper than you. Mm. So, anything I'm telling you, you can't understand. You can only have signs. Mm. You can only trace with signs. I hear you, man of God. So that's why God have to show you the sign yesterday of the thunder. Because if I'm yeah. telling you today now about thunder, mm. you didn't see it yesterday. What will you say? I'll be confused. <laughs> you say there's nothing like that. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, help me, man of God. No, the only thing I can help you now is to give you the stone. <laughs> you you must be cracking those stone and be cursing. Okay, wait for me. The, the, there's an ejection they give to you, they put inside of you, and it's, and it's damaging you. Yes, yes, man. I've, I've just been experiencing pains in my body. Hmm? I've just been experiencing some pains, most especially when I'm asleep. Because something walked into your house when you were sleeping, a force entered you. Something else is living inside you, you are not yourself again. Deliver me, man of God. You know, sometimes you, your hand will just be shaking. Yes, 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 man of God. I do experience pains in my body, most especially in the hands. It is because there is an appointment that belongs to you. Amen, amen. There's, an, there's, there's an office that is prepared for you. Amen, amen, amen. So... <coughs> The people that have heard about it, they are the one fighting you. Help me, men of God. Help me, men of God. Help me, prophet. That's why I'm here. I need that alignment. The Lord will fix your life. Amen. I receive. I receive. I receive, prophet. I receive. Because the person 
standing close to you is putting on a uniform. He's in the military. So that is where that fight is coming from. Whew. Because there was a case. Forget about issue of um, the ministry where you had a fight. That's not what I'm saying. Because your mind is always taking you back to that man of God you see. The former place you were going. Yeah, yeah. And since you left. Yes, yes, yes. The person started appearing to you. Yes, true man of God. True man of God. True. You thought that's your problem. That's not where it's coming from. And you see this pastor in a way that you are not supposed to see a man of God in your dream. As if he's fighting you, as if he has something against you. He doesn't have anything against you. You also demon is using his face. Somebody is masquerading with his face. True man of God. You'll be rescued today. Receive. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, man of God. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, prophet. You, you go and settle with that person, okay? It's, it's not your problem. The, the man of God I'm talking about, you have to settle with him. Thank you, prophet. I'll tell you what to do. Wait for Thank you. How are you? Where are you from? I'm from Botswana. You have spirit of two wives. 100%. I think every time I sleep, I see myself. I even told my wife here that I trained myself getting married somewhere in Limpopo. Yeah? I trained myself getting married in Limpopo. This is my wife in the physical, but I told her that Someone was marrying me. That's what I told you. I said, you have spirit of two wives. 100%. So these are mysterious language. If you, if you didn't see that woman marrying you, because she was the one marrying you, it's not that I was marrying her. 100%. People will say, what is the meaning of you have spirit of two marriage? This one is not your wife. That one is your wife. 100%. This one is your side chick. <laughs> so we are, we have to eh? I want this one I want to divorce those ones in the spirit this, <laughs> you, say, you say you were married now yeah? in Limpopo Kiani I was just dreaming it was a dream are you from there I'm from there exactly I always see myself in the same village yes and you were married now there exactly yes have you married this one Yes, we are married, yes. Because she, she strangled you when you were sleeping. You woke up, you see nails on your body. That's true, man of God. That's very true. Because um, uh, when I was sleeping some other time, I told him that, uh, like, I just wake up as if I'm choked. So I tell him like there's a woman fighting me, so I jump out of bed most of the times. She comes out of the wall when you are sleeping and begin to look at you with angry eyes. Say so why you why are you lying down with my husband? You know men of God, actually I saw you coming out of the wall. Mm. So when you were coming out of the wall, you wanted to deliver him, and then he started running away, and then I pulled him, like, uh, you need to be delivered, like, man of God is here to deliver you. And when you're about to deliver him, that's when I just woke up from the dream. People don't understand that. Before we are doing anything physically, I've, I've gone to that wall spiritually. Amen. 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 So, if we come to the physical realm to do what we have done in the spirit, you have to understand also. How can, is it, if it's not, if it's not the Holy Spirit, how can you say the person comes from the war? And it's the same war. 
I also say that is where the deliverance will come, that war. Amen. The reason why you saw him running, you were supposed to be here before today. That's true. That's true. That's very true. So even last, last week, the, the Easter service, mm. he said to me, like, uh, we are supposed to go see Prophet Uche, but then I've reserved a vacation for you guys, so I can't be able to cancel it. Who is, who is saying it? He, he, he told me. Uh, yes, the one who said, we need to go. Even here, I'm he, the one. He, 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 he said, even here, he was the one. Even today, like, he's the one who brought us, like, let's go see Prophet Uche. He's, the wife was making him to run. He's supposed to come since last week. Yes. <laughs> huh? Last week, we were supposed to be here. The woman is him. He was running. Thank God you cash him back. Because he needs... Raise him up. Come on, raise him up. Hey, come on. Out in the mighty name of Jesus. Out. You are free. And listen, the Lord is giving you a baby girl. Amen, 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 amen. Woo. Come. Who came with you? I came with my husband. Huh? I came with my husband. Come, come. You you have a call of God. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. I'm not praying for you. I'm not praying for you. Why? Oh, God. Okay, you direct me, okay? Don't just stand like that. A lady was training you before. A lady prophetess. And there's a fasting they give to you. So you have to go back to that your training. You can't run away from it, okay? All Amen. Right. You had an accident that would have paralyzed you. Yes, in 2021, I had an accident and my car fell into the trench. That's what I'm seeing. Because the car rode more than six times and entered this hole. Yes, it, man of God, is true. It's, it's your... It's an arrow because... You got drowsy in the car. When you were driving, you got drowsy the first time, drowsy. You were supposed to stop. Are you hearing me? Yes, man of God. Because there is an issue you had in a school. There's a fight in a school. So that arrow came from a school. How are you? Did you confess? Because you, you is you that betrayed this woman. Okay, Lord. Did you confess? I have not confessed, but uh, I have had disappointments in my life, especially with women. Uh, the marriage crash, uh, just four years, and it's been almost twenty something years now. I have two daughters, and uh, it has never been well. Yeah? It has never been well. Talk loud. You are doing... Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm saying it has never been well, even with my ministry. That's why listen, I came listen, here. Listen, leave ministry first. See, I, I told you people that if you're a pastor, I won't... If the Holy Spirit don't point that place, leave that place. Don't talk about ministry. Talk about the roots. My family background, nobody has a successful marriage. And I've suffered it. My mother... And my father, we are uh, broken. In fact, I came out from a broken home. And nobody has a successful marriage in the family. Nobody. That's you, that's you, your father had two more women after your mother. Correct. My father had a second wife that has four children after my mother. And when they got separated, 
and my mother went outside and had other children. I think four, five children from outside. So I'm the only surviving son and child from between my father and my mother. So that's why that course is on you. Forget about ministry. It's not, it's not about being a pastor. Thank you, man of God. Are you hearing me? Thank you, man of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So we have to break that foundation. That's why I came. I came from Cape Town. That's why I came, but I'm originally from Nigeria. I've struggled a lot. So, if you first of all, because that tree, you keep on seeing yourself. If you sleep, mm. you see yourself in that big tree at home. Correct. From my mother's home, there is a big tree in the center of the home, and they used to do a lot of libations and uh, chickens. They were serving idols. And in my dream, I usually see a lot of snakes coming from that tree, and I'll be killing those snakes. That's where your battery is coming from. Right. Very correct, man of God. Very correct. Thank you, Jesus, for locating me. Thank you, Lord. Because all the glory of everyone in that family is there. All the wealth is there. Your ministry is there. Everything that should give joy to your life is in that place. 100 plus percent correct. Thank you, Jesus. Thank so you, Lord. This is the third time you are trying to do ministry and they keep on scattering. God even gave me the name of the ministry. The Holy Spirit revealed a lot of things to me. But and, that's never good. and there was where you were serving before. Yeah. They conspired against you. Correct. And the, the pastor passed away now. The ministry we started together. That was where prophecy located me and gave me this ministry. But after I was the head of the prayer team there in the ministry. Don't worry. Don't worry. After this deliverance, your life will have direction. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, finally. Finally, Lord. Thank you. Yes, my heart, my soul, I give to you forever. Thank you, Jesus. Because you're, you, you are a miracle child. Yes. Because when child, the child that was before you died. Ah, Chidi. Thank you, Jesus. The firstborn of my mother's name was Chidi. And seven years according to what my mother told me because I didn't meet him. Mm. Then his leg was broken. He had leg problems. They were carrying her, him one place to the other and then he died. When I came, uh, my mother told me that six months after I was born, I became lifeless. And then they took me to uh, Habali's homes. I, in fact, these marks I have was given to me from the Habali's home. They did a lot of things. But one day, after I was grown and I was a pastor, prophecy came out and said that he was the one who rescued me there at the Habali's home and not what they were doing there. And my life has been like that. So actually, I'm a miracle child. And that is why my mother gave me the name Tambari, which means work of God. Not, that's why I say, you are, leave him, come on, leave him. You are, you are the one that scatter your home. It's not the woman. It's, it's the spirit that is, that is following you. Oh, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. Be free. Amen. In Jesus' name. business were you doing before? I was, I was in the logistics. Yeah? 
I was in the logistics business. Come, because you have some confession. You, there was a time you stole. Yes, man of God. Because you know how you got money to start a business. That's true, 100%. Huh? That's true, 100%. That's true. So everything crashed. You lost everything. That's true. Yes, Let's huh? think now. I'm expect, I have already received the, law, the email from the lawyers that are telling me that they will repossess my houses. Oh, I'm telling you. So, that's 100% sure. Um, so now you are going from place to place say, God, what is going on with me? That, that, that's true, man of God. You are, you are 100% sure. That, that's very true. That's very true. So is the foundation, the way you got money before, it was... And that's what you used to establish yourself. So God said, if you want to follow him, there has to be a restitution. He will remove everything and start afresh with you. <laughs> because you started blaming God to say, how come now I took God serious? Yeah. Started having a new good relationship with God. Yeah. Even giving to a church. Why is it that that's how my life is going down? Mm -mm. Yeah. Is that is overhauling? Are you hearing me? I hear you, man of God. I hear you. I hear you, man of God. So the Lord is starting something new with you. I receive. Your, your, your greatest fear. I receive, man of God. Your greatest fear now is this house. That, that's if you are 100% right. That's true. I'm losing two houses and yeah, I'm very stressed. Hmm? I'm, 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 I'm in a process of losing two houses as we speak um, and I'm very stressed. I'm very stressed. Here's the wife. We are in the process of divorce as well. I say you lose everything. They cost you. You have been cost. People cost you, so... Deliver me, man of God. Hey! The, my, uh, the, okay. uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, now that he needs his wife more, at the same time, she's leaving. Don't worry, God will change your story. Driver. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, prophet. Driver. What is going on? I don't know. You bought uh, vehicles for them that they should drive for you. And you, the one you were driving, they took it away. How are you? Who came with you? And the other ones. Huh? I came with them. Huh? You see? I came with them from Botswana. Are they your family? No, I came alone. You need help? Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. The man who was saying was coming next time. Listen. You need help? Yes, sir. Because your uncle is tied now, the time. There was one of your relatives that walked out of the house. They don't even know where he is still today. Yes, there's one. But he came this last December. Mm. He was in Johnny. He, he usually stays there for a long time, then he comes. He stays where? In Johnny, in Buzwa. Johnny. Johnny. Nobody knew where he was before. He just returned back again. Yes, that's true. Because you will walk and they will not find you. 
It's what is following you. Uh-huh. They're just walking and they won't find you. Yes, sir. You will lose. There's a mother. She's in Bhutan. Because your mother knows what happened to you when you were a child. You were uh, those special children. You, are, you have insanity. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Uh, you are not normal. Deliver me, man of God. From? From insanity. <laughs> I'm not joking. Yes, sir. I saw you walking naked. Because you are your mother's all in all. Yes. You are mama's boy. Yes. Yeah? Yes, sir. So the only way they can get the mother is your mother is to you. It's through you. You know you always find yourself naked in your dream. You don't know you don't know where you are. Yeah, there, there are times that when that happens. Yeah? There are times when that happens. That what? There are times when I I don't know where where, where I will be. Yeah? Like I would I don't know where I will be. Like <laughs> when I'm sort of sleepy. Yeah. Yeah. It is madness. Come, you people must hold him up so that they will not find him. Why? You know the mother? You know the mother? Yes, sir. She's close to me. She's the one who asked me to bring me here. Because she's now worried about his life. Yes, sir. Nothing is working for him. Through that. She's the one still taking care of him. Yes, sir. And he's a body to her. So, that is just working now. He's a madman. But today he will be free. The mother was saying I must bring him. The mother was saying I must bring him first. Then next week I'll bring. I'll come with the mother. Okay, you say she should come. He should come first. Yes, sir. Yeah, because <laughs> his madness is ripe. He's a. God has rescued you today. Come on. Guy, come on. The, 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 the. He, he's, he's a millionaire. That's why they're attacking him. They're really... Drugs. Yes, yes. She's she's taking drugs from the hospital, and mm. and it's not working for her. Mm? Sorry, the drugs that she she's taking, the medication is not working for her. The doctors they say they do, they don't see it on her, on her blood, the medication. Instead, the the problem is getting worse. Now she's overdosing. Yes, that's true. Yeah? Yes, doctor. Yeah? Yes, it's wrong. You say yes, doctor? <laughs> so, yes, probably. Because now she can just be in the house and start talking anyhow. That's true. That's true, men of God. Yeah? That's true. It's true. She see what people don't see. She talk to strange things. That is true, man of God. That is true. <laughs> I even talk, I even speak to God. I prayed for this day. And I, I, she has the anger, too much anger. Sometimes I, I even prayed. I knew it was not normal. <laughs> Thank you.
Now listen, not everybody that give you something you take and use, okay? Yes, sir. Because uh, somebody gave you clothes, yes, shoe, and air. Oh, Jesus. I think I know what you're talking about. Don't worry. Don't, don't. Let's okay. Not, let's, let's not expose everything here, but that's where they give out witch. That's where they give you witch. Next time you don't take. But they gave you. The arrow will go back to where it came from. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They wanted to ordain you before. Huh? Help me, prophet, to understand. Huh? Help me, prophet, to understand. Who came with you? My husband. What are you doing? For now, I'm not doing anything. She's not doing anything, prophet. I'm currently working at the mine, gold mine. Huh? I'm working underground at the gold mine. Also assistant pastor. Yeah? Also assistant pastor. Who we, who we are fellowshipping pastor. Prophet. You are assistant pastor. Him, he is assistant pastor. You are assistant yes. pastor. Him. Yes, sir. You are assistant yes, pastor. Yes, okay. Prophet, she is. Because she's my wife. I'm talking to Pata. I'm talking to Pata. You know what's Upata? To talk in here. That's Upata. Because. You are living like, you are eating like an ant. Yes, prophet. It's true. It's true, prophet. N n now you don't understand yourself whether you should pay attention to the job or pay attention to the ministry. Yes, prophet. It's true. It's true. The job I'm currently doing, like I once got a prophet that is not the kind of job that I should be doing. I just took it because I was doing nothing. So what job do you say you should do? They didn't specifically tell me the job that I should do. But mm -hmm. they said the way like I'm eating like I'm eating small. You need to go for a retreat. Yes, prophet. You and God need to talk. Yes, prophet. Are you hearing me? Yes, prophet. Yeah. So it's that kind of retreat where I say, God, if you don't talk, I won't stop. You need to go. Yes, prophet. Yes, prophet. It doesn't mean you will not be going out. Like, it's a fast that you personally go into. Yes, prophet. Are you hearing me? Yes, prophet. Because God has a word for you. Yes, prophet. I understand you, prophet. So, after that journey, nobody will help you. No man can help you. You have to. God is, is calling your spirit. Yes, prophet. Actually, my wife has been telling me actually to fast. I've just been, that God will say something. I've just been, like, not finding time, like, to work, to make it, like, because of... You like totem. food. It's not, uh, not time. You like food. <laughs> you have to. And you must fast. You just, you don't have any choice than to fast. Yes, prophet. Yes. Yes, prophet. So, God has to tell you something. Yes, prophet. Hmm? I will do it, prophet. You told him to fast, eh? Yes, prophet. I've been pushing him, encouraging him. Have even you been fasting too? Yes. So he eats while you fast? No, he doesn't fast. Eh? He doesn't fast. Uh, yeah, that's what I say. He's eating while you are fasting. Yes. You see yourself? <laughs> Can you come on? Somebody sent us an, a, an, a, an email. He said, why do you eat people hard? I'm not <laughs> <laughs> it's not you, the body I'm eating. It's what you can't see that I'm eating. Are you not seeing it's moving? If it's ordinary hand you used to eat it, you will stand up and say, why did you eat me? <laughs> so it's what is beyond him that touched him.
Prophet, I want to confirm the prophecy that you gave me. You said that you prophesied to me that uh, there, were, there, were, there is an accident that I was involved in and was very fatal. Yes, I want to confirm that. And you said that it was coming from school. In 2015, 2016, I was given a scholarship by my government to do post basic, to do post basic course. And some of my colleagues were not happy concerning the criteria that, what, that was used. So in 2021, after I finished, I was involved in a car accident whereby my car was, my car rolled into a trench three times, but I came out and had. So I just wanted to confirm the prophecy to be true. Thank Stand up, there's a decision you want to make. There's a decision you want to make. Are you hearing me? Yes, Prophet. You are in between a decision now. Yes. It is uh, about business. I told myself that this year I'm not going to do anything until I see a man of God, because I've been doing things and they don't go anywhere. They just finish. I, I don't make progress. You, your... Thank you, Jesus. Who was doing catering? I once worked in a restaurant. Did you miss your husband? Mm, I'm married. My husband is in Cape Town. That's why I'm asking you. Did you miss him? Yes, I do. Because it's the first time I'm the one leaving him with the kids. Mm -mm. Did you miss... You know, to miss targets is different from missing someone. Mm. There was a pastor. There have been a few men of God who proposed to me before I met my husband. There was somewhere you were singing before. You were a worshiper before. There's, there is... Your life is a mystery. It is. It is. Because there was a time you knelt down, I was praying, I was crying, and said, Lord, did I make a mistake? Is anybody that you are living with now is your husband, okay? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Anybody you marry, wedded, have you wedded him? Yes, I have. He's your husband. Thank so, you, sir. So forget yes. where you are coming from. Thank you, sir. I want to see him. Yes, sir. How are you? Where's your mother? She, she passed away. You know, you see, you're, you, you going to a grave will not solve anything. Because when your mother was alive, the love you're supposed to give her, you could not give it to her. Yeah. Because both of you were fighting, it was a problem. Yeah, there was problems. Yeah? Yeah. Talk loud, okay? There was problems. And she didn't die peacefully consigning you. She died in pain. 
There was family problems. Now, when she died, you started regretting as if you would have given her more time. And now you sometimes you the grave is as if you want to talk to her. Yes, because I was raised by my grandmother. So she was never there in my life. Towards the time you grew, that should not be because she was not there. That should not be a reason you separate yourself. Because towards the time you grew, she was looking for you. You were avoiding her. You were are, you are, you are picking offense. Don't worry. I'll see you. How are you? Are you in the flight? Are you confused? Uh-uh. Bring her out. You have a witchcraft spirit. Okay? Yes, Pastor. Who came with you? My daughters. Raise your head. Don't worry. Your, your weave will not fall. <laughs> Look at me, Mama. You. They are using your face to attack people in their dream. And it's making people to, there's a rumor going around that you are a witch. You are not a witch, they are just using your face. Are you hearing me? Yes, Pastor. You know, your family people were avoiding you. Talk. It is true, it is true, Prophet. Huh? It is true. And you don't know why? I don't know. I really don't know why, Prophet. They just say she has a bad heart sometimes. Uh, yeah? They say she has a bad heart, that she's, yeah, she's strict, I think. They say she's a witch. So, a witch in the family is using a face to appear to them. Jesus. Because what is normally happening in the family is if there's a proposal, all of a sudden it just well. A proposal true. of marriage, somebody saying I'm coming, all of a sudden, voicemail. So it's, it's an attack. Now the thing is she that is the one causing it. There's a lady here, you always see yourself as if your brother uh, or your father is sleeping with you. Come.
Prophet, I would like to confirm the prophecy that you gave me. You said I bought a car for somebody and she left with it. Yes, indeed, it's true. I bought a car for my wife in 2020. She transferred out and just went with the car. Who came with you? My brother. Where are you from? From Dalstrom. Huh? Dalstrom. Pumalang. Stay where you are. Come on. The man that called you for mine, what happened? Uh, nothing happened. It just stopped. Mm -hmm. It just stopped. Nothing happened. You just stopped calling you or what happened? Um, we, we were discussing it, but then it just... I don't know what happened. Like he, we, I was busy with other stuff, then it just stopped. Uh, we stopped communicating. Because you are stranded now. He, he, he was calling you and two other people. Now he has gone ahead with others. You will, he will call you back. Amen. Amen. Because that's your dream. You want to go into mining. Amen. I'm not praying. I'm talking. Yes, sir. That's true. Don't worry. You are, you are going to get a call. Amen. Thank you, sir. You say it's your brother? Yes. Huh? Yes, prophet. You came with him? Yes, we came yes? together. From Pumalanga. You will travel there together? Yes. You must gather your family together, okay? Yes, I will. Mm, it's you. God is putting everything in your hand. Amen. Don't... Don't uh, prioritize marriage now. Yes, I hear you. Because you attract heartbreak. Mm. True. Huh? Very true. You are a victim of many heartbreak. Very true, prophet. Because it was not time. Mm. You see, when you rush before time, you meet wrong people. Amen. Marriage have right time that we bring the right person. Thank you. When you force yourself, when you force yourself, when is the wrong timing? Yes. It's heartbreak you face. Yes, perfect. So you see yourself giving love too much now, and yet they break your heart. Yes. Huh? Yes, that's, that's exactly what was happening. Hey, if you are shouting again, I'll... I'll I will be giving you the deliverance to come and do. Is the mic. The mic puts echo to everything that's going on. This year, there's a huge testimony coming to you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come. You, you, have, you have power. It's... Huh? it's true man of God. You have dark powers. Liver. You are not an ordinary human being. Yes, your husband. We are not together. Hmm? We are not together. It's 
So he left you. I left. There was somewhere you went. And there's something they did to you. Yes. So you, you are not ordinary. You are sitting here innocent. You are not innocent. You are the devil's wife. I don't know about that, man. Hmm? I don't know about that. Help me. There's an altar you went. Yes. I didn't go there myself. I, a friend just, a friend was there and the friend called me because we were supposed to go to the shops. So she said, meet me in this place. So when I went there, she was trying to explain my problem to the man and the man said, let him pray for me. I said, okay. It's fine. So he was doing some things there. So I don't Which know. He was, he said I must sit down. He put some things on my legs and he was saying he's praying for me so that uh, my eyes, my spiritual eyes should be open so that I can be able to do the work of God because he says that I'm a woman of God. Keep quiet. So I don't know. You, you, you open your leg when you are sitting on the ground. You open your leg on the ground. And there was... Yes, that's true. Listen, listen, listen. I'm not playing here, okay? Yes, but of God. That's true. And that also gave you power to attract a man if, if man see you, they can't withstand you. He said he's going to, he's, he's trying to kill me. That's what he was saying. So I don't know actually. You are a strange woman. Who came with you? I came alone there with a friend. That man that married you, they destroyed his life before you left. He became yes. another version of himself. Are you the friend that took him there? Took her there? No, man of God. <laughs> is, 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 you are the one, eh? No. Both, both of you go to the Coven together. We are from Cameroon. Eh? Both of you go to the Coven together. Oven. Coven. Coven. So is you that invited her to the Coven? No. It's a, one of my friends from a U.S., so she was the one, she said, I must come and see a, a Prophet Uche. So before she told me about Prophet Uche, I said, yes, my friend in U.S. told me about you, we must come. So that's how we are here. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I want to see you. Wait for me. Come. Uh, Prophet, I'm the one who would like to confirm that there's a lady who's been seeing herself sleeping with her father in her dreams. Last who is sleeping week, with you? Who is sleeping with you? My stepfather. I dreamt of him sleeping with me in the night. Are you staying with him? No, he passed away in 2021. <laughs> and now you are seeing him sleeping with you? Yes.
wait for me. Come. See this man I told to stand up. He's putting his glass. Eh? Where are you from? Cameroon. All these West African people, you people behave strange. Nigeria, this is Ghana, Nigeria, Cameroon. I'm calling you, you are removing your glass like a chief. <laughs> huh? I'm asking you, is the glass more important to you? No, because. Every time you come here, if you want, if you talk to them, they remove the glass. <laughs> Enter, you come here. Hmm? Enter, you come here, they talk if to you. If you come, if you call someone, they have to remove the glass. Have they talked to you before? Yeah. I've spoken to you. You touched me only, you didn't say nothing. I've only touched you. Huh? Eh? Oh, wow. You can't talk. Yeah? I'm not good in English. What are you good in? French. Come on to that bed. Eric. <laughs> Who came with you? Wait, Eric, Eric, wait there, wait there. Stand there, you can stand there. Where's your wife? Huh? I don't have a wife. But what of the lady that was pregnant? Can't run away. She's following you. <coughs> Listen, if you if you if you um, air loss, if you find it again, don't wear it. Yes, are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Your things are always missing. Yes, sir. It's true, sir. And after some time, look as if some of them reappear again. Yes, it's true, sir. It's very true. It's very true, man of God. And when you see it, you wear it back. Yes. Please help me, man of God. Are you, are, are they settled this case? Hmm? Yes, sir. How? Oh. Yeah? Actually, I, I the, a case of uh, a fleet cut at work. Any cut? A fleet cut, fleet cut. Fleet cut? Fleet cut, yes. Uh. A truck came and fell, 60,000, I mean, about 6,000 6, liters, 600 liters. Then... You are explaining the liters to me as if I'm at your work. What happened? How did this, what happened? It was a case of fraud that they, I mean... They say you stole. They say, they, they say I stole, but the guys came to fill without my knowledge. Then it was settled. The case was settled. They saw that I'm innocent, sir. The case came up again. No, it never surfaced again. I'm telling you. Because you will lose your job. This is not the first time it's happening. It's not the first time. Mm. Yes, sir. It's not the first time. Oh, I'm telling you. This is, is an intentional act. Who came with you? I came with my wife. 
Are you aware? Yes. You see, the person on your, the, the person on top of you, yes. at work, the person yes. above you. Yes, sir. The person need to step down for you to climb. That's what is, is going on in the office. Yes, sir. And the person is already is, is away. Okay, I understand. Because you notice how he started treating you and talking to you. Yes, sir. There was a threat that they will use you to replace him. Yes, sir. And he will intentionally You know you have been stagnant in that place where you are for long. Yes, sir. They are supposed to have promoted you. Yes, sir. Yeah? I've been stagnant for four years. Yeah? For four years. Now they promoted me to become a manager at another site. You are taking somebody's else's position. And they will well, I wasn't aware of that. How? Okay, the only way you will be aware now, eh? Yes, sir. Is when you have lost the position, so that you'll be aware. You need to be aware, Abby. You want to be aware? Yes, sir. Okay, you'll be aware. <laughs> you, 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 you'll be aware. Tomorrow, once you just get to the office, you'll be aware. Yeah? I think it's true because when they promoted him, they said they voted him to the office, and then the other said, "No, it can't be him." You remember? You know, he doesn't remember. Tomorrow he will remember. The, 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 first, the first letter on your table, the, 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 the heading of the letter will be reminder. Eh? Yes, sir. I understand, sir. May God help you. Thank you, sir. Prophet, I'm here to confirm the prophecy. It is very true that uh, there's a church that I used to uh, fellowship there and I had a misunderstanding with the man of God and I stopped going there. But at the moment, we are communicating. Secondly, you mentioned someone very close to me in the military. He's my brother. I didn't tell you to say he's your brother. I say where the arrow is coming from, the person is in military. Now you are saying he's your brother. It's not me that said he's your brother. Because anywhere the case is going to rise up now, I only say somebody close to you is very military. It's you that says your brother. Because <laughs> your brother can be watching now and not say, Prophet David said, so if we go to the courts, I'm free. <laughs> you know, some strange people come here. And when, whenever prophecy goes out, then they did it. There is a pastor forum. Uh, the prophecy came on Thursday. Uh, the one who did the one on one. A pastor came here and he got a prophecy and said, You are a thief before, but I'm seeing you praying for people. Now, a group of pastors, they're in a, in a, in a, in a WhatsApp group. They edited the prophecy. And they started posting it. So all eyes are on me now. They are watching. They are some of you, some of some people sitting close to you are part of them. They are parts. Once it happened here, finished, they will go to the YouTube to download it and put it in a group. See the latest today. <laughs> Everybody should mind their business. Are you hearing me? Mind your uh -huh. So now I have to be coding every message I'm saying. Uh, that man that says his brother is a is his problem. It's not me that said it. <laughs> so before you people say anything about me, I will I will turn it against you. Don't you? <laughs> May God help you. All right. Um, don't worry, I'll pray for you. Go and wait for me. I'll pray for you.
Let's take our offering, then we'll continue. Bring out your offering. Please, raise this person up, please. What are you doing, please? May the Lord bless your offering in the name of Jesus. Break the yoke of poverty, hardship. Now, I want you to speak to your finance. As you are holding that offering in your hand, speak a word to your finance before I pray for you. Speak to your finance. In Jesus' name, may the God of abundance visit you. Amen. The God of harvest visit you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. may the Lord remove hardship from your finance. Amen. May the Lord remove borrowing from your life. Amen. Remove begging from your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you have entered into your abundance. Amen. In Jesus' name. Salam Church. Uh, my name is Bonolo Rangwanamung. I'm from Botswana. My testimony goes like this. Um, last year, towards the end of the year, in December, um, I was formally informed that I'm going to be promoted at work. Um, and they were saying that I should wait for the memo and the letter in January. But to my surprise, uh, when the memo circulated, I was sublined. Sub, uh, so I wondered why my name was not there and I didn't get a proper um, advice on why I was not promoted. So I came here on the 2nd of February, then I went back to Botswana. I did not just sit people of God, I constantly connected to the online ministration and the uh, midnight prayers. And by the divine favor of God, I am now promoted, I am a manager. Somebody shout your hands for Jesus. My sister, we celebrate with you. This is only just the beginning. Let your testimony be permanent in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Jamie Hens is welcome, our next testifier. My brother and my sister, you're welcome. Please introduce yourself and share with us your testimony. Amen. Uh, my name is Pastor Lloyd. Uh, last year I came here when I was engaged on the 24th of December. Okay, and uh, before you proceed, can you please have a look at the playback? Yes, I don't have even a woman. Yeah, I want to give you one woman. Are you married? Yeah? <laughs> no. I, I don't know. You, you like her? You like her? I like her. <laughs> We are matchmaking here now. You are not married, eh? Yes, I'm not married. Where are you from? I'm from Zimbabwe, but I'm from Botswana. What of you are you from? I'm from Zimbabwe, but I'm staying in South Africa.
Where do you stay? Botswana. You but, stay in Botswana? Yes, but I'm from best in, I'm from Zimbabwe. When are you going back to Botswana? I'm going on Monday. I just come here for, for the service until Sunday. Are you working? I do business. I do chickens and uh, yeah, I just work like going do peace jobs. Okay. And... What of you? Where do you stay? I'm staying in Jobek. I want you to stay. You will go back on Tuesday. Yes. I want to pay for you both dates. Just do what I say. Yes. Uh, the ministry, this ministry is going to supervise your dates. Yes. And pay for you people for a date. Yes. For you to know yourself. Are you hearing me? Amen. After the date, you make your decision. Yes. But uh, we will send the pastors, they will go with them. So I will send two pastors with you. They will prepare a nice place for you. Expensive. Evidence of it. Keep watching. If, 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 if you are not clapping your hands, you are a suspect. <laughs> Amen. So uh, after that, we have seen God. God was so wonderful to us. And our relationship is well. God is doing greater things. <laughs> so as we come today, I came to propose in the church today. Are you, are you, are you? Praise the Lord. If you know that you are not jealous, jam those hands beautifully for Master Jesus. Hallelujah. As you can see, that was the day our brother proposed and our sister said yes. Hallelujah. My brother, please continue with your testimony. I mean, so we thank God for everything which he has done into our lives. I mean, yes, things were not easy on the way, but we know that with God, 
Nothing is impossible. Amen. So now God has turned our life to another level. We come from Peng Lobola yesterday. Amen. Are you, are you watching? Look at the screen of your television. Somebody make a joyful noise. Somebody jump those hands for Jesus. Somebody make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, so my brother, you are telling us that yesterday the cows came home. Yes. Somebody, if you are not jealous, let me hear you make a joyfulness unto Jesus. You can do better. You can do better. Amen. This is just the beginning Amen. for the two of you and your families. Amen. The God of Prophet David that started this right in this church Amen. is sustaining it. Amen. Let your testimony be permanent in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Somebody jump those hands. Beautiful for Master Jesus. Amen. Jump those hands. As you have celebrated with them, celebration will never depart from your home in Jesus' name. Amen. My sister, you're welcome. My sister, you're welcome. Please share with us your name and tell the people of God what God has done for you. Oh, Salem. My name is Nana. I'm from South Africa. So I've been struggling to get a job from 2022. I uh, would just get rejected. I did not know what I was doing wrong. They would acknowledge that they received my application and I am the best candidate for the position. However, they would tell me that they decided not to continue with my application. So when I got to church on the 11th of March, the prophet prayed for me and he said, you will testify. He walked away after that. And then I got a, a call on the following day for a job that I didn't even apply for. So they saw my profile on LinkedIn and they decided to get in touch and they invited me for an interview. So on the interview, they did not offer me the job that I'm, quite, I'm qualified for. They offered me a higher job and a higher paying job. Somebody jam your hands for Jesus. When the grace in this house locates you your life can never be the same hallelujah somebody as you are sitting here today your two feet are on this ground that same grace is coming upon you today in the name of jesus jump those hands beautiful for master jesus my sister let your testimony be permanent in jesus name amen amen, amen. hallelujah so we are going to march make again today <laughs> if no, you are married, or oh, your husband, or oh, I'll give him to somebody. <laughs> Amen. It's cold here. Yeah? It's cold or hot? Good. God will bless us with the place. So, which of you want to marry? Let me help you now. If you want to marry, raise up your hand. Because marriage is available here, you can see. <laughs> Where are you from? 
They are looking for you at home. You know him? <laughs> Why are you shaking your head for him? He does not stand, it's fine. They are looking for you. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Yeah? Yes, sir. Because you gave them money. You have Okite as a pot. You have a pot. So you, you, there's a sacrifice they did. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Yeah, there's a sacrifice they did. And it's you that sent money. They asked you to send money. Do you know why? For prayers. Huh? For prayers. It's the prayer I'm telling you now. That prayer is not to God. That prayer is to ancestors. It's to spirits. Please help me, sir. Who should have mercy? Help me and deliver me. Wait, who should, uh, you say what? I said you should help me and deliver me. No, you say have mercy. <laughs> is it me that sent you to do it? Huh? I was praying for the betterment of my family. Me and my brothers, not just me. Hmm? I was praying for the betterment of my family, my brothers and I. God, all of you are suffering. Yes, sir. Hmm? Yes, sir. They are looking up to you. I'm the head. Huh? I'm the head. You are the senior. Yes, sir. I'm the first son from the second wife, but now the overall first son, my stepbrothers died. Who is the Kechuku? My uncle. Huh? My uncle. Are you supposed to give him something? Yes, sir. He asked you to give him? To loan him money to transport his goods to Portacot. Huh? To loan him money to transport his goods to Portacot from Lagos. Did you give him? Not yet, sir. Are you planning to give him or you don't want to give him? I want to give him some parts that I can afford. I want to see you. When are you planning to give him? This week. Huh? This week. This week? Do you know me? You know me? When I saw you, your face looks familiar, but I couldn't place it. <laughs> you said my face looks familiar. Okay, we came from the village. <laughs> eh? I'm not sure, sir. How do I know Ikechuku and that you need to give him money? How do I know? It's strange, sir. We, you, may, you said my face looks familiar. Maybe we met before. No. You told me. No. Eh? No. I want to see you. I don't want to say anything. So that if I tell you in public, if I say it in public now, if you do it, it backfire. You will bring out the video and say, see what he told me. So I'll tell you something secret. You hear me? I hear you, sir. Uh, don't go and cage yourself. Remember that your friend that wanted to travel, that still asked you to send money. So the first money you send has brought a problem to your life. Mm. I'll see you. Brother, I Where are you from? I'm from Pumalanga, but original. I'm now in Pretoria. Huh? I'm from Pumalanga, but now reside in Pretoria. You, you, you left the church that they left for you. Please remind me. Huh? Please remind me. Oh, why would I remind you? I can't call the person. Name. They left a cell, like a cell group. <laughs> Where you were managing, you. Um, just remember, just thinking about the church now, because um, yeah, originally from Pumalanga at home, I, there was a church I was going to. Yes, where I grew up. No, I said you were leading. They gave a position to lead. Mm -hmm. I think that must have been the um, 
when I was at varsity. That's what, listen, no, no, it's not varsity, I'm telling you. What I'm saying now is, is something recent I'm, take, I'm talking to you about. It's a, it's a home cell. Are you hearing me? Yes. Mm, you left it. Because the woman left you. Please the one you spend money on. Yes. Huh? Yes. It was someone, yes, true. That's true. There was someone I was dating before, a long time ago, before I got married to my wife. I did spend some money on, on her, and then we left. That was a few years back. You took her to school. You helped her family. Yes. Huh? Yes. A woman that I was dating back then, correct. Huh? Yes. There was another lady I was with. Yes, correct. Yeah, I know what I'm telling you that. Because she was the one that betrayed you after everything you did for her. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yes. You are, now you marry a wife, for you to even help that your wife now is a problem. Yes, I'm having, yes, we're having some challenges. Even since we got married financially, we had uh, so many challenges. Things were stagnant. You Correct. spend for another girl. You were lavishing, but now, your own yeah. wife now, since you met her, is zero. That's correct, sir. That's true. And my wife is just right here, correct. Wife, come. Because side chick have enjoyed. You never enjoy. <laughs> huh? That's true, Prophet. Now it's, it's, it seems as if the whole load of the ass is on you. That's very true, Prophet. It's very true. Since you came to this man's life, you became a man. That's true, Prophet. Carrying load. That's true. This was your first time? Third time. What of you? Also third time. Side chick have enjoyed the money, so immediately the side chick. It's your time to enjoy as a woman. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I receive. I receive. Are you ready for the blessing? Yes, I'm ready, sir. I'm ready, prophet. We are ready. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. They are going to call him. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes, prophet. Mm. They are going to call you and everything is going to change. Is is a security company. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. Yes, sir. And there's a huge position that they are going to place you. Amen. It's not just ordinary. Amen. 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 I, you know, you, you have been praying about this issue. Yes. Yeah? Yes, prophet. I like your strength. You are a strong woman. That's true. It's, it's it's true. You have seen what should make other women to leave this marriage. But That's you stood. True. That's true. Don't worry. The, the pain is over. That is The girl he left took his glory. So he, he, now he went to marry and start so far. Where's your father? Where's her mother? She's passed on 2015. Eh? 2015. There is a new wife. She is at a farm in Free State. Farm? Yes, sir. Do you like the new wife? Yes, I do. Eh? Yes, I do. Is she your mother? Well, she is playing a very good mother role right now, so, yeah. My mother passed away, though. Yeah. You have a problem, though. You are not fine. Yes, sir. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. You, you, there's another lady you are considering. Uh, is he that is asking you out or is you that is asking her out? 
Because you can't survive too. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. You yes, can't. Sir. You can't survive to she wants to help you. Yeah, I can say. But, but she wants to use condition. She wants to condition you. You will not survive. You are you hearing me? Yes, sir. I'm listening, sir. So stick to the one you know. Okay, sir. Because at work. She even bought you gifts. That's very true, sir. Yeah? Yes, sir. Why is she buying you gifts? Is it your birthday? No, I mean, <laughs> she actually, I was actually telling my daughter yesterday, uh, she, she's the lady, she bought, I sold a house to her. She bought my house. So normally she used to come and ask one of my driver to take it to get some. She's selling what they call Malamukhodu. So the, the, <laughs> the tribe, yeah. <clears throat> so what happened? She used to ask, borrow my my baki and but she pay. So yesterday was it was it for Saturday, Friday, Friday? She actually came, and she asked for the baki again. So my driver was out because I'm running my own construction. So I said I don't have a driver. I can't take you to Heidelberg. I said what I can do? I can borrow you the car. So she came and took the take take the car. I even told my wife, my daughter about it. About, about so a week, two weeks before, two weeks before, she, when the, the, she brought the, the baki with my driver, she gave me the gift. And you took it? Yes. I, I, I didn't know the intention. She bought the house from me, Prophet. I've told you the intention. She, uh, she used to come to my house. Uh, she used to come to my house. Uh, when my mom is there and my kids, they know there. Uh, yes. She's familiarizing to, with the family first now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I was not aware about that, Prophet. Now they have used gifts to... Can you run away now that you have accepted the gift? Do you think that gift is ordinary? Do you know where that gift went to before it came to you? No. Eh? No. 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 Nah. <laughs> I, I don't know, Prophet. Huh? I don't know. I think you like the woman to be your stepmother. <laughs> <laughs> huh? No, Prophet. No. So much, Prophet. Huh? I love my wife. May God help you. Amen. Amen. Next time, next time, a, a woman buy you gift. That gift is soaked with power. Help, help me, Prophet. To help do what? Me. Deliver me from whatever that, that is behind that gift. Whatever spirit that is behind that gift. Like I said, I didn't know what this was. I thought that she was just appreciating. And she always come to the house doing as if... No, she used to. That was, that was after she, I bought the house. She bought the house from me. She used to come to her house, to my, to, to my place. Uh, she's your wife. No, <laughs> she's not the prophet. <laughs> Okay, let's wait for Nati six months. We'll know that she's a no, wife. No, 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 Prophet, help me, please. Please. Eh? I've got a wife. No, let's wait for Nati. No, 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 Prophet. We'll see who, who is your no, wife. No, 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 Prophet, please. Help me, Prophet. Come. You are a married man. You are taking gift. Be ready for another marriage. You. <laughs> Can you go? Out! The mighty name of Jesus. <sighs> See somebody that say he will not marry. They have already married him in spirit. Sir. Hey! Out of him, the mighty name of Jesus. Hey. How can this man escape now? They have tied him. <laughs> you people that like gifts, women, men. <laughs> you see him? He's looking for gifts. <laughs> After he is on that gift again. He 
know, you know what's going to happen? Listen, tell him, man, when he wake up, she will bring on that gift again. Are you hearing me? It's prophet. Let him video her. Okay, prophet. Video her and the gift. Okay, prophet. Let him not reject it. I didn't say she reject it. She's coming with another gift again. Okay, prophet. That gift is to seal what she has started. Okay, prophet. Don't, don't, are you hearing me? Don't fight her. Don't reject it. She has planted the seed. She needs to water it for the grass to grow. <laughs> so, so, she's coming with another gift. Don't reject it. I must take it. Yes. No, <laughs> no just <laughs> say no. <laughs> say no. Take what I said. Just what I said. Use your phone to video what I'm. Just say thank you. Do as if you are appreciating it. Okay, perfect. Mm, say thank you, thank you. Then you video it. If maybe your driver is there or somebody is there, it's the person should receive it, not you. Oh, okay. Because once you receive it, you have received the love portion. Yeah. May God help you. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Prophet, je veux confirmer à bord. Je veux confirmer pour les les grossesses que tu as dit. J'ai quatre en quatre femmes qui qui ont mes enfants et il y a deux que je ne vois plus. Ça fait peut-être plus de 15 ans. Donc ce que tu disais, c'est vrai. Prophet, I would like to confirm the prophecy that you said to me. You said to me that there is a pregnant woman following me, uh, and I will not run away from it. I confirm that it is true. I actually have four baby mamas. Two of them, I am not in contact with them, and two of them, I'm still in contact with them. One of them, it's been more than 15 years from the time she was pregnant. I haven't seen her. The second one, it's about eight years ago, but right now I'm only in contact with two of them. And le vous avez vu ma, you know Marie, he said, he said, he said, tell him, and he said he doesn't have wife. Abi? No. No, he's not married. No, he doesn't have a wife. He's not married. He's not married. So he just wants to be spreading the news by dropping baby mamas everywhere. Tell him one of the lady. <sighs> okay. What? L'une l'une des femmes. Stop. You say l'une des femmes. Stop. Where are you from? Where are you from? I'm from Limpopo. Yeah? I'm from Limpopo, but I'm staying with Alex. You're staying with Alex. What are you doing now? I'm working. As what? I'm doing a lot of things. I'm working, huh? working at the radio station. I'm doing a lot of things. Now they just promote me to be a receptionist. To be a receptionist? <laughs> In radio? Yeah. Which radio? It's, it was Leaf Central, but now we change. Huh? We, it was Leaf Central. Leaf Central? Cliff Central. Gift Central. Cliff Central. Now Cliff. it's the broadcast. Wait there. You, you have an issue to answer. You went to use Muti to take what is not yours. You went to use Love Portion. There's someone here, you want to start a poetry. Come. You've gotten the place. You are planning to start a poetry.
this same air that is to wear wig. They were barbing your hair in your dream. They cut your hair, I'm talking to you, okay? They cut your hair in your dream. Yes. You, you are married to a dead man. There's a dead man that keeps on appearing to you. You are married to a dead man. You were fainting a lot before. Are you hearing me? Huh? You were born with. Because there's asthma in the asthma. asthma. Yes, asthma. Eh? I was born with asthma problem. Who came with you? My mother. Huh? My mother. Call her. Call her name. Mama, you listen. What's her name? What's her? What's her? <laughs> because. You are still, is still. Who's that? Who's this way? This will give her direction now. I don't know what your camera is doing with your bolulu. Ah, you the mother. Who's that? Who's this? Stand. Do you know him? Ah, oh, it's my son. It's huh? my firstborn. It's your firstborn? Yes. He was born with asthma? Yes. Huh? Yes. Because it's not, it's not safe now. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes, my Lord. You are, you are, this one is supposed to be taking care of his younger one, but now you are taking care of this one like a child. Yes. Huh? Yes, my Lord. Of course, it's true. Because they wash his head. They wash his head. Yes, my Lord. Beg your pardon, my Lord. They wash his head. They wash his head. Yeah. Huh? I don't understand. They use the the clean sin. Yes, they did. Hmm? Yes. Who? He's the father. Huh? His stepfather. His stepfather. Yes. The new man you marry. Yes. Are you still with him? Yes. Why did you go and wash his wash him? I don't know, man. Talk loud. I don't know, man of God. Uh, are you not a Christian? I am, man of God. So why do you go and wash him? Yeah. Huh? I don't know. Something that they do, they do it without my concern. Did they tell you why they are washing you? No, they didn't tell me the reason why. Huh? They didn't tell me anything. That's why you are hearing is because they wash you. Remove your hearing first. Because you are not normal. They have washed you. You are, him, man of God. Huh? Him, man. From what? <laughs> no, from what? From washing. Come, 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 come here. See, take him. Full and open. Open and close. Five Sunday. What's wrong with you? You see, they've washed you. Where's the mother? Bring the mother here, please. Him. <laughs> he's, 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 he's somewhere that they have washed that, is, that behave like this. What is this now? What is this? It's your pants. Huh? It's my pants. Uh, uh, the, way you, the way you do the pants. What is this? I folded them. Huh? I folded them. You know why you fold them? Do you know why you fold them? Yes, Pastor. <laughs> why? It's because they are too long. No, it's because they have washed you. <laughs> free it, let's see, free it. You go see now. Why is this thing too long? <laughs> you 
להגזים. When they wash you, they will wash your brain away. So this, this guy is just a flavor now before. He was just a, a bloated man. Nothing inside him. That's why he was folding his trousers out. So if a madman see you now, he'll be saying, is that, that guy, why, why are you dressing well? We're supposed to be wearing the same. But now, your mind will come back again. Amen, I receive the pastor. Because admission was a problem. Yes, it was. Because huh? he has to travel to America. He has now, to travel? Yes, we have to fix visas, but we can't get his papers because he was in school and uh, college last year. Beleku. Beleku. <laughs> Listen, he's going to be a political leader. Amen. Amen. That's a bit. That's a bit. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Stand up. Did God call you? Yes. No. Huh? Yeah, I just said uh, it came last I was here the second time. Huh? I was here the second see the second time now. Did God call you? Yes, the God called me. Huh? Yes. God called you to do what? I just as an evangelist of the Lord. Leave his Bible now. Are you his father? Yes. Are you his spiritual father? My <laughs> you say you say you're a pastor. No, I'm not a pastor. I'm an evangelist of the world. You are an evangelist of the world. Yes. You go and preach. Yeah, um, we're supposed to um, go to uh, United States. Huh? Next week, we're traveling. You are traveling to where? To United States. Who came with this man? I'm a came alone. Yeah? I came alone. You were? I came alone. Okay. You are going to where next week? No, I'm going to United, United States. You are who? He invited me. Who, who invited you to the United States? Another congregation. Another congregation? Yeah. Where's your passport? So my passport is yes. They were in Rambeck. Eh? Rambeck. Your passport is in Rambeck? Yeah, the way I'm staying. In your way? The way I'm staying. So you have visa to go to USA? Yeah. You go and preach? Yeah. What will you preach? <laughs> yeah, what will you preach? Can you preach what they say? Eh? Please, I want to see him after you, please. Okay, sit down. All right, hallelujah. I'd, I would like to confirm the prophecy that the man of God gave me. The man of God said, if I lose her, I should not wear it again. So I can confirm that recently, I realized that there are weaves that I don't see in the house. So I even asked the lady that usually helps me to clean. Then she said she had not seen them. So it's something that usually happens. The man of God continued to say, you always lose um, stuff like clothes. And when they resurface, you will wear them again. Yes, I do, because I would think maybe I just misplaced them in the house. I never took it in a spiritual way. You know, you, you know there was a time your body was itching you. Yes, sir. Huh? It's true, sir. It's true, man of God. I usually itch even in, in my ears. I would be itching. 
And there's a boil, a groot. Yes, instrument of God. Even now I have it under my 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 armpit in my Open your armpit. armpit if you can open it. Oh, okay, no, it's fine. You can't if you can't put that over. <laughs> I'll tell you something, okay? That's Thank you, man of God. Yes, yeah, there's something that's going on in your house. Thank you, man of God. Because they are they are they are cooking you softly. Yes, man of God. Please help me, man of God. Prophet, I'm the one who, who bought a stand and I want to um, open a poultry business. You bought a what? A stand, yeah. a, a place at any day. You want to start now? Yes, Prophet. Since I got unfairly dismissed um, January, so I'm not doing anything at the moment. And um, I'm, I'm busy with my LLB uh, degree, second Be year. Because God showed you a vision of the poultry. Yes, Prophet. It's going to su su succeed now. Yeah. I receive. I what, receive. Are, what are you doing? Uh, I'm a student nurse. Yeah? I'm a student nurse. Student nurse? Nurse, Who yes. came with you? Uh, my cousin. My cousin's sister. I see, I saw you crying. Your family is crying for you. Yes. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you, Prophet. You made a girl to leave a man and you left the girl. She's, yes, Prophet. She's going to kill you. You will oh. not go free. Which save me? I mean, I mean, I mean, is it me that connected you and her? I think Come on, who is Mpo? Mpo? Who came with you? Don't allow them to put blood in you. Are you hearing me? It's perfect. Because your blood is not fine. Please Something is wrong with prophet. your blood. Please help me, prophet. The, the, the last person you were with before affected you. Please help me, prophet. You know, you had an, you, there was an infection. Huh? Yes, prophet. There was an infection. Yes. Huh? Yes, prophet, it's true. Now it's, it's sometimes it's as if it has stopped. It's, it's, yes, yes, it's come it's, again. It's true, Prophet. You have a very. You have discharge. Yes, that's correct, Prophet. Huh? Yes. And now sometimes you wake up, the discharge is on the bed. Yes. Huh? It's true, Prophet. And it's a foul odor that you don't. Yes, that's correct. You and tried. I don't understand. Huh? And I don't understand. What it You've is. tried to use it yourself. It's not working. Yes, it's not working. Please help me, Prophet. Wait for me. Be free today. Thank you, Prophet. Do you, do you still want to travel? Huh? Yes, man of God. Huh? Yes, man of God. Where do you want to go? Uh, anywhere where God can send me. Huh? Anywhere where God can send me. There, there was an invitation. Somebody was invited to UK. Yes, it's true, man of God. Huh? Yes, it's true, man Who's of God. Who's that? There was uh, another lady. Your girlfriend? <laughs> no, it's not my girlfriend. Which kind of lady be that one? Your girlfriend online? No, it's not my girlfriend, man of God. We are playing here. I think we are playing. Don't go. She will leave you. She will dump you. Don't travel there. If there's a woman that is inviting you, say, come, come, I'll help you. She can't help you. Because now you want to sell all your things, pack all your things and go. Come. The, the land that was bringing issue. Huh? Yes, Prophet. They have not, uh, I don't know what, I just took myself out of the issue. And I told my senior brother that I want to hear anything about the land. Because they expect you to talk. Yes. 
uh, they called me. My senior brother called me. I told him I don't want to hear anything about the land because uh, another senior brother of mine died because of that land. Because now it's you the one to kill. So they, they are disturbing you a lot. They are, they are disturbing you a lot to respond. This side view like this. They are disturbing you a lot. That is very true. Yeah? Uh, that is very true. My senior brother asked me if he could sell the land. I told him I don't want to hear anything about the family land. There's, there's something buried in that land. And if you put hand there, you will just die like that's, a chicken. That is very cool. Come on, come on, come on. Mind your business, yeah? Why were you fighting with police? Huh? Confusion about my wife, because my wife wanted to, uh, me to be arrested, they separated from me. So I was just a confused somebody. You say what? My, my wife wanted me to be arrested after we separated in December, because I was just a so confused somebody. You were just a confused somebody? Yeah, even now I don't know what's going on in my life. You, were, you, you say you were, you were confused, now you are even more confused. Yeah, I'm more confused now. Huh? I'm more confused with what happened in my life. Nothing works. Everybody, even in my married, my, my family, nobody's married now. Every wives are going away. Nobody's helping us. From my, I was the only one remaining with a wife. Now my wife is separated with me in December. Leave her, please. Leave that place. All of you, leave there. So, out of all... <laughs> Olamo, 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 this one, don't pass, be careful. Get <laughs> All right, you. Your wife left December. Yeah, but we were still in the same house. We just separated. He said, I have nothing to do with me. I can marry another wife. But we were still in the same house. Ah, you see, which can, which can say? I, I, I told you that you are confused. You are, they have, they have yeah, yeah, you. Come, 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 come. Fuck, come. <laughs> Come. There is something you are addicted to. Have you stopped? Stand up. <laughs> uh, have you stopped? I will stop. Uh? I will stop. You will stop? Yes. When? As soon as possible. Huh? As soon as possible. I've been praying for, about it. Please leave. Do you you what? Huh? I've been praying about it. I've been praying to stop. Because you stop, you go back again. Yeah. Huh? Yes, I do that. It will kill you. It's something embarrassing. No, I, I can't say it here. Okay. Your head is on the ground. You Pick it. <laughs> A girl told you she will kill you. Hey! <laughs> hey! Oh, okay. Professor, I want to confirm, uh, Professor, uh, that you said I, I, I... Actually, I always dream about dead people. There's something that's always happened to me and yesterday 
I dream, I dream, I uh, think more than three times, a strange man trying to sleep with me. Uh, greetings, church. Uh, a prophet uh, prophesied and asked me, who is Mpo? And I said, I don't know Mpo, but there is one that I know, uh, my cousin, called Dimpo, Aye. not Mpo. And there, there are so many... Uh, there are so many uh, Mpos that I know. How are you? Come. What, what happened to your clues business? Nothing was moving, sir. Huh? Nothing was moving. I tried so many business. It was not moving? No, not huh? at all. I was selling food. I was selling a time when I was staying in Binoni. So I was staying with my sister, and then she phoned her father to say, uh, nothing is moving in my life. Can you please do something? And my sister, she's, she's living a good life, but I'm stuck. But the clothes... Also, you are putting it online. Yes. Huh? Yes. So, what did your father do when they took you there? She just said to my, to, he's not my father, he's my brother's father. So she spoke to him and then everything stopped from there. You know, there's a place you went to, they say you should bring air. They shaved you. You are, stand there. There's a case you needed to report to the police because you were abused. Oh, that must have been happened when I was young. Huh? When I was young. What happened? Uh, one of my stepbrother, he forced himself on me. And I did tell the elders, but they just brushed it off. Because till today, you are still feeling the pain. You are still the... I still have that anger. <gasps> Listen, God is already handling the case, okay? Don't, don't take it personal. Come on, come here. Oh, yeah. you're back on the ground of my... Hey! Out! The mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be free. There was a ring. Stand up. There was a ring they gave to you before. the prophecy. You said I took something that is not belong to me. Yes, I confirm that is true. I dated this man in 2013. I found that he's married. I opened the safe. It's where I found the paper that is married in community of property. And when I asked him, he, he denied. I took the paper and drew the photocopy from work. And I asked him again. He started to fight with me. He told me, he asked me, where did you get the paper? I said, in your safe. And he was like, no, I'm not married. I was like, it's true because I found the paper that you are married. Yes, it's true. I confirmed I took something that does not belong to me. You, 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 you have the urge that is not normal. What? Are you hearing me? Urge that is not normal. Dog, you saw dog. Yes. Yeah? Yes. The dog was romancing you. It's following you. 
Yes, I dreamed that when I was warm. It's like the dog was attacking me. You are the dog wife. It's not attacking. It's, lo it's love is showing you. No, deliver me, man. Because, of because God. since that time, you have urge. Deliver me. That's it's true. Don't say deliver me yet. I'm, that's all you have. That's true, man. Of God. You have urge. Like, you know, your satisfaction for sex now is a problem. Deliver me, man. Of Several God. men cannot satisfy. Come on. Die! It's a, it's a cross. Die out of her in the mighty name of Jesus, guys. Are they settled? How did you escape? Because you are supposed to be in police station now. Yeah, I'm supposed to be in police station, but unfortunately, I just escaped. Huh? I'm supposed to be in police station now, but unfortunately, I just escaped. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately <laughs> for you. <laughs> Where are this man? <laughs> okay, unfortunately, okay. Fortunately, they will arrest you. Please help me. Please. Huh? Please help me. How did you run? I just left the environment. God, they are looking for you now. I know. Huh? Yeah, I know. Huh? I know. Say, unfortunately, come here for the. Okay, <laughs> fire, okay, come here. Fire out, mighty. Fire, unfortunate spirit. Out! Out! Out the mighty name of fire, okay. fire out the mighty name of Jesus. Out, out. He jumped out of police van. Out the mighty okay. the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Leave the place, please. Leave the place. Stand up. You are taking many tablets. Yes, man of God. Eh? I can't sleep Your ass is like a chemist now. Yes. Because you, you are trying to doze off. Yes. Eh? So that I can sleep. you have pains. Yes. Eh? Yes. I can't sleep at night. Sometimes I feel my spirit as if it's leaving the body when I'm lying down. Is that us where you are staying? You are living with another being in that house. Yes, and my husband as well. Yeah? And my husband as well. His things are not moving at all. Listen to what I'm telling you. You know, inside that your house, sometimes you can sit and be hearing footstep. Yes. Or something on the roof. Yes, yes. Even though the night you were sleeping, it's as if you were perceiving somebody was cooking. Stew. You are living with ghosts. Are you hearing me? Yes, true, man of God. It's you, very true. You woke up if, with... Eh? Yes, what I'm saying is true. I need help. A ghost is cooking in your pot, in your stove. <laughs> 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 Because around where you are staying, there is a grave. There's something that someone they buried there. So true. Yeah? It's true. Okay! 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 Out! Out! You are free. Yeah. 
All right. We'll round up here. Stand up. This season, the Lord is opening closed doors in your life. Every door that was shut against you, I pronounce it open. I pronounce it open. I pronounce it open. I pronounce it open. In the name of Jesus. What happened to you? Sorry. Who, who came with you? She's my mom. She's my mom, man of God. She said uh, she was going to work one day. It's been two, four, uh, it's been four weeks now. So when she was stepping out from the gate, she felt something like an arrow hitting her her leg. And then after two days, her leg started to get swollen. And then I I I called a car. From sh the car took her from Lipompo and brought her here because I couldn't go home. Take out, take out, 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 out. She felt an arrow hit her. Yeah. Yeah? Yes, sir. Who is on the console now? Who is on the console? Please take the best that's talking. How long is this? It's been four weeks now. Even the, the, the worms were coming out from the her leg. You say worm was what? Worms were coming out from her leg because I, I couldn't take her to hospital. I was afraid they're going to cut the, the leg. So I was praying and washing the, the worms with salt every day until this leg become a slim like this. It was very solid. It was fatter than this. You yes, can, very fat. So see, I do have the pictures for before. You can see the difference? Bring the I picture. have the pictures for before. Huh? I have the pictures when it was when it started and now the current one for now. Sit down for one minute. One minute. You, so you should understand our one minute. Why are you, why are you confused? You can see the difference with the leg itself. This one is slim. This one is fat. And it's paining you, eh? Yes. Huh? From here up to here, it's paining. It's swollen. When it started, after some days, the leg was like this, man of God. After three days. And then now this. So she said she felt an arrow hit her on the leg. Yeah, it was on Thursday when so she was. Did she move with work. this? Now I'm, using yeah? now I'm using this because before I was using my bum to walk, to go to the toilet, to go to the bath. You, are, you are use your bum bum to walk on the yes, ground. Yes, but now I can stand up and then I'm using. I could. She couldn't even walk. She couldn't even walk. She was powerless. And something was, she was saying something, it's blocking her, her to, to breathe. She couldn't even breathe. The mighty name of Kai, the mighty name of Jesus.
Rise up. Rise up. Leave your clothes, Mama. Somebody's holding it. Come. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I'm free. I am here. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. I'm free. I Thank am delivered. Jesus. I am here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. you, Holy Spirit. I am free. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I am free. I am here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. She's free. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. She's free. My mother, she's healed. She's been suffering since I was four years. Today is the final deliverance. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my God. Thank you. Are we ready? Thank you, Jesus. He's my brother. What's wrong with him? No, th things are not well. He's got all papers, but he has no job. If he has got a post, a, a, a case in the police, they're saying, come back, come back. As for me, I'm in a death. My husband has no job. He's not working. Even I'm trying to apply jobs. There's no, I'm not even getting replied, man of God. What, what, what did you learn today in, this, in teaching? Patience and love. Huh? Patience, love. <laughs> to have patience, man of God. To have patience, to love. Man of God. Who, who, who are we loving? Mate? Who are we loving now? I'm loving God, man of God. To love God, to love God. So, are you patient? 
I saw you, men of God, you're already passing by. Then say, no, you can't leave us, men of God. You can't leave us. We need your help. We need deliverance. Men of God, that siege, that holding us. Yes, the brother, hey. Teddy. Yeah? Teddy. 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 He's going to even the police. Thank you, Prophet. It's my heart. Ah, thank you, Prophet. Thank you. How are you, Prophet? I'm fine. How are uh, you? Uh, <laughs> you delivered one of my friends. That's why I came here. Yeah? You delivered one of my friends. That's why I came here. That's, that's why I said, uh, no, I won't go. I will fight until I meet you. I have met you today, Prophet. Uh, this is my sister. I'm happy to see you, Prophet. How which are you? Of, which of your friends was delivered here? Yeah? Uh, it was brother Charles with, with the one with beard, the same who looks like this man. <laughs> brother Charles, yeah. He, look, he has beards that look like that. One. Yeah, like this man here yeah, at the door. <laughs> His name is brother Charles. Yeah? His name was brother Charles. So, so after his deliverance, what happened? Uh, like when he came here, he was a serious problem, the same with mine, the other one. May I have many, but. We have the other one similar. So I just say, when he can deliver this person, he can deliver me also. Because we are, I know him, we are close. So that was my faith. So that's why I was doing all this thing. I said, no, I won't go to Pumalang without meeting you, Prophet. So you gave up where? I won't go to... I was come from Pumalang. Me, I'm coming from Soweto. So you come to Soweto where I'm staying. Then you come here to the church. So that's why people were fighting. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was. You have to deliver as men of God. I know God is using you. I'm always checking you on Facebook. Maybe but my prophet is online. I check you, then I say, no. There's power in me there. There's power. I must come. That's why I come. Even my brother says, let's go to that church. They know when, which prophet are you talking about? Is this one? This my brother says, yes, yeah, this one. They say, come, let's go. That's why you're here. Today your family will be free. Yes. Yes. Stand up, stand up. Hey, you both have cause. Your father was a thief. Are you hearing me? Yes. Huh? Yes, prophet. Uh, he told people stand. Yeah. And people house. Yes. So it's the cause that is following you people. He was abusing people. and let her go. Thank you, Jesus. The park on the ground, the mighty name of Jesus. Out of her. Release her job, release her marriage. Prophet, we've got an instant miracle here. You just prayed for this lady. You passed, you touched her head. She had uh, abdominal pains. Now she's free. Uh, I can confirm that uh, Pastor... Touched my my head and um, 
immediately I felt some hot. My name is Cynthia from Zimbabwe. I came here just last week. I'm happy to be with um, the church today. When Pastor passed uh, me by there, after, she, uh, after he healed the woman with the ulcer, he hit my head. I felt some hot air coming down through my body, and then I've, I felt some pain on my lower abdomen, and it just disappeared, and praise the Lord. I feel better now. I know that uh, I've been having this pain for a long time. I've been uh, given medication for a long time, and nothing has been working. But today, Prophet just touched my head, and I'm free today. I'm healed. Okay. All right, stand up. We are, we are, we are ready now. May they call you for testimonies. May you be appointed for miracle. Amen. The day Joseph arrived before Potiphar, he was appointed. What it means to be appointed is you don't follow the normal process. They pick you. I am praying for you right now. Be appointed. Be appointed. Be appointed. Be appointed. Be appointed in your career. Be appointed in your family. Be appointed in the name of Jesus. Let there be a mark of appointments. Is a mis is 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 something you don't struggle to achieve. If you have to struggle to get it, it is not from God. If you have to suffer to get it, it is not from God. But when you get it and say, I didn't know you honor me this way, that is from God. Be appointed. It's your season of appointed. It's your season of appointment. You shall be appointed in the name of Jesus. I pray for you this season. Positions you think you are not qualified for. Opportunities you think you are not qualified for. I say be appointed. Be appointed. Be appointed. In the name of Jesus. Say, oh God of mercy. Here am I. Anoint me with your mark of appointment. Hope your mother prayed a prayer.
Jesus' name. Opportunities are many. I'm telling you. It takes grace to find them. We have people are crying and saying, uh, nothing is working. Nothing is working. People are getting appointments. The anointing to be appointed. Let it come upon you. Come upon you. Come upon you. Come upon you. In the name of Jesus. Huh? Please touch my head. Huh? Please touch my head, prophet. No, see, next week, God told me to do two weeks of anointing service. anointing service and all the Sundays you are going to be anointed I will lay hand on everyone with that anointing are you hearing me God confirmed to me that this is season of harvest my prayer for you is let that anointing help you to discover purpose. Let that anointing open your visions. Because God only provides where there's a vision. Are you hearing me? Where God finds vision, he brings provision. Stagnation is the lack of vision. When there's stagnation in life, it's because there's no vision. So as that anointing is coming upon you, the Lord announced that this is a, this is season of harvest. Amen. The harvest is now. Amen. May everything that belongs to you locate you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This week. May the Lord mark you with appointments. Amen. Appointment that will change your life. Amen. Appointment that will change your story. Amen. Be appointed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everywhere you applied or you did not apply, they will call you. Amen. Believe what I'm telling you. Amen. Miracle do exist. Amen. You will see miracles in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Where they have forgotten you, you will be remembered. Amen. I see them calling you for projects. Amen. You will be called for projects. Amen. You will be called for projects. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord said, I should tell you, cry no more. Amen. Cry no more. Amen. Cry no more. My baby, man of God, my baby, man, just help him. He's in the hospital. Me and my husband, we came. He's been, he's been in hospital from the 18th of January. And the well, doctors, they are telling us that we need to make a decision to switch him off of the machines that he's on. I've got a video. But then he is, they cannot see. find any diagnosis on him. So I just feel like it's something that needs to be dealt with spiritually. Please, man of God. Stand up. Please. Yeah. 
I see all your faces are glowing. You are not ordinary again. The reason why your face is glowing, God has placed something on you that will make you to be appointed. Are you hearing me? Say, I am appointed, not rejected. Seventeen months. It's Seventeen months. So what did doctor say? They cannot find any diagnosis on him. He, he, since he was born, it's been it's been in and out of hospital. Our lives re literally revolve around going in and out of hospitals. His name is Nathaniel, and me and my husband. Since we had him, it's our first baby. We've been married for three years. And it's been ups and downs. I've lived in hospitals with him. We have prayed for him to still be alive now. It's really a miracle. He should be dead. But then this one, this one is the worst one that happened from the 18th of January to now. He's been deteriorating. They've done all exams on him. They cannot find anything wrong with him. Yet now this just they're saying that we just have to switch him off and let him pass away peacefully. Mm. How many children do you have? It's our first baby. Huh? It's our first baby. It's the only first? Mm. first yeah, it's the first and, and the only. only? Yes. For now? Yes. His name is what? Nathaniel. Huh? Nathaniel. Father, I ask for your mercy. Let the Lord show this child mercy. In the name of Jesus. I pray for mercy. Come on, be on your knees. Let the resurrection power of God touch this child. Nathaniel, come back to life. Be restored. In the name of Jesus. Father, let it be a miracle. This baby will come here and testify. In the name of Jesus. Let the resurrection power of God touch the child wherever he is now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, miracle worker. Thank you, the God of signs and wonders. Do your miracle again. Do your sign again. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord has shown you mercy. You will come back and testify. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We'll come back and testify. Amen. Amen. You want for me? I said you have been appointed. Amen. Listen, the kind of grace that is on you now, even in your village, they can call you, you just want to appoint you king. So, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so, you want to be the king of your village? Huh? People are happy. You want to be the king of your village? The Lord said, I should tell you that the book for operation, the operation is cancelled. Yeah. You that have a court case that is not ending, today marks the end of that court case. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. 
there's an appointment on you and that appointment will attract you to favor Amen. you will be in the right place at the right time Amen. I say you will be in the right place at the right time you will be favored like never before in the name of Jesus, of Jesus. Say, I see myself appointed. Listen. One of our students that was here, that is here, their school was looking for, they wanted to appoint a school president. And among six people, they selected him also. Now, the vote was going against him. Even teachers, we are, the teachers have their favorite student. It was not him. All the schools, we are going after one person. And they were mocking him. They said, you can't be the president. That one is already, everybody was, it, it was visible, clear, that everything was against him. Then he said, anytime he's walking, he remembered what I told him that. What I'm teaching here that feel as though you are ready it. So he said, anytime he was walking in school, he was walking as the president. I went, <laughs> and when they asked him, when they told him that, hey, we, that guy is going to win you, you are not going to win. He said, I'm already the president. Amen. And after all the many votes, that was for that guy. He was appointed. It, they choose him. The old school choose him. That is what it means to be appointed. All the laws of life is not proving that you are winning. Time. Everything around you does not show that you are qualified for it. But God just appoints you for it. I say be appointed, be appointed, be appointed in the name of Jesus. Your family, you are appointed. In your career, you are appointed. In your nation, you are appointed. In the name of Jesus. Say, I am appointed for favor. I am appointed for healing. I am appointed for a new house, for a new car, for a new job for promotion i am appointed for expansion i am appointed for the top you are rising from the bottom to the top god works with appointments not qualification so that was why Mary was appointed. Joseph was appointed. What you need is not connection, it's appointment. Be appointed. Be appointed. Be appointed. This season be appointed. You are the new appointed millionaire. The new appointed billionaire. The new appointed estate agent. You are the new appointed in the name of Jesus. Get ready and don't be scared when strange things start happening to you. Because the anointing on you is for strange miracle. Strange breakthrough. The Bible says the race is not for the swift, nor battle for the strong, nor bread to the wise. Say time and chances happen to them all. That is the meaning of when you are being appointed. It's not because you are swift. It's not because you are strong. It's not because you are so skilled. It is because God chose you. I point to you. I'm talking to you. You, 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 you. Wherever you are, every overflow, be appointed. Be appointed. Be appointed. Be appointed. In the name of Jesus. Receive. 
receive, 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 receive in the name of Jesus. So I receive my appointment for a new season. I receive my appointment for harvest. I receive my appointment for a turnaround. I receive my appointment for healing. I receive my appointment for breakthrough. I receive my appointment for rising. I receive my appointment for deliverance. I receive my appointment for anointing. I receive my appointment for marriage. Receive, receive, receive in the name of Jesus. Just raise up your right hand wherever you are. Just your right hand. Please take the babies from. Wherever you are, stretch out that your right hand. Is that same hand that, we, that they will shake you? That is the right hand of God now. That hand you are raising. If you promise God that you will not sit on your testimony, you will be the first to testify. You will be the first to testify. That hand that is lifted, let the right hand of God begin to touch that hand. 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 Let that hand receive fire. Receive fire. Receive fire. Receive fire. Re look at it. Look at wherever you are now. The anointing is coming upon you. The Lord is touching your hand. He's touching that hand. Look at that man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joy. You have sat in that place for too long. As you are stretching out your hand, as Jesus held the hand of Peter and dragged him out of the sea, Jesus is dragging you out. He's dragging you out. He's dragging you out. Hey, okay. Yes, yes, yes. He's dragging you out. He's dragging you out of that pit. He's dragging you out. Stretch that hand. Every pit they have kept you. Jesus is dragging you out. Of that pit. Be dragged out. You have remained in that condition for too long. Peter was sinking. And he stretched out his hand. Master, help me. That's why I told you to raise up your right. <laughs> Peter said, Master, help me. If your hand is lifted, you are saying, Lord, help me. Raise that your right hand. Lord, I'm sinking. Lord, my faith is sinking. Help me. Yes. 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 Wherever you are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Everywhere you are. Everywhere you are. Stretch it out to him. He will help you. He will help you. He will help you. Stretch it. Jesus is holding your hands like hold your day. Hey. Hey. Stretch it out. He's holding your hand. He's holding. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. You will know you have been dragged out. Jesus, drag them out. Drag them out. Drag them out. Drag, hey. drag them out. Drag them out from that pit. Drag them out. Drag out. Drag them out. Drag them out. Drag. Hey. Hey. Look at them there. Hey. Look at them. Look at them. Everywhere, everywhere you are. You can't hide in that pit anymore. You, can, you have remained in that condition for too long. 
drag them out drag them out drag them out of the oppression drag them out from the coffin drag them out from that oppression yes 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 look at that look at them look at them that stagnation that delay you are being dragged out you are being dragged out you, that sickness that grave that talk for you that grave they talk for any member of your family that untimely death be dragged out be dragged out be dra i drag you out of the grave i drag you out of that casket you that keep on seeing graveyard you that keep on seeing dead people you that keep on seeing yourself being buried i drag you out i drag you out i drag you out i drag you out take them out take them out there are many people that keep on seeing dead people see themselves in the grave see themselves being buried see your relative being buried the lord is dragging your family out of that grave be dragged out of that casket be dragged out of that prison be dragged out of that beat be dragged out of oppression be dragged out of poverty in the name of jesus stretch that right hand stretch it don't allow this touch to pass you whatever you came here whatever was the reason why you came here whatever pit you are sinking in can't you see Jesus stretching that is out to help you can't you see Jesus stretching out his hand to hold your hand hold your hand let him hold your hands let him hold your hands yes 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 shena kabala to se protalaka heve si se pele twa jeta variando seva pela kabelu te se variando I decree upon your life you are here by dragged out of that circumstances you are here by dragged out of that situation you are here by dragged out of that pain you are here by dragged out of that doctor's report you are here by dragged out of that suffering you are here by drag out of shame. Amen. You are here by drag out of disgrace. Amen. You are here by drag out of embarrassment. Amen. You are here by drag out of untimely death. Amen. You are here by drag out of sickness. Amen. You are drag out of poverty. In the name of Jesus, you are drag out. You are drag out. You are drag out. In the name of Jesus. Shake the people, tell them congratulations. Jesus has dragged you out. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our God is good. And all the time, are you blessed? Are you blessed? The anointed for this generation will guide us in seeking God's presence and experiencing signs and wonders firsthand.
This is an opportunity to connect with God and receive supernatural manifestations that will impact your life and the lives of your loved ones. Don't miss this life-transforming prophetic service. Come and encounter the presence of God in a remarkable way.